Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. United States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell, who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the Ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. A woman goes to the doctor worried about her husband's temper. The doctor says... What's the problem? The woman said, Doctor, I don't know what to do. Every day my husband seems to lose his temper for no reason. It scares me. The doctor says, I have a cure for that. When it seems that your husband is getting angry, just take a glass of water and start swishing it in your mouth. Just swish and swish, but don't swallow it until he either leaves the room or calms down. Two weeks later, the woman comes back to the doctor looking fresh and reborn. The woman says, Doctor, that was a brilliant idea. Every time my husband started losing it, I swished with water. I swished and swished, and he calmed right down. How does a glass of water do that? The doctor says, The water itself does nothing. It's keeping your mouth shut that does the trick. <laughs> Here comes Kate Smith and God bless America, followed by a patriot with our Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> oh, good morning. politically correct and don't want to be. Good morning, I'm Zeb Bell, Zeb at the Ranch, with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations, serving you with a great big spring tire sale. Stop in and see them today. And some of our great advertisers, including Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue Suite. Two in Burley, helping you get back to being you. Right now, let's go to the phone line and have our Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning. Well, good morning, sir. You demand. Yes, sir. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all good job wheels right now let's go to the weather forecast brought to everybody by k and r rental at 256 south 600 west of hayburn right there smack dab on the burley paul highway can't miss it Six seven eight three one two two. the number to call and they've got everything you need to get ready for summer all the power rakes and rototillers for the garden lawn mowers forklifts power tools oh it's all there for you at k and r rental with roger and the crew on the burley paul highway right now here's the weather mostly cloudy skies as we hit to the middle of the week here's your weather forecast for zeb at the ranch mostly cloudy skies is what we're expecting for today winds out of the west southwest right around 10 miles an hour gusts possible as high as 26 miles an hour we are expecting a high of 57 tonight mostly cloudy skies with a low of 39 tomorrow we are going to have some rain showers in the forecast, maybe even thunderstorms by the afternoon. Mostly Ooh. cloudy skies with a high of 58. 60% chance of rain showers for Thursday night. Cloudy skies with a low right near 44. For Friday, 20% chance of showers in the afternoon. Partly sunny skies with a high of 60. Friday night, we are expecting mostly cloudy skies with a low of 46. More rain showers expected for Saturday and a high of 58. That's your weather forecast for Zeb at the Ranch. I appreciate it. Thank you, Gina. And don't forget forget they offer all the tools and equipment you need both long and short term on their rental basis you get over there and check with them today call them find out more about k and r rental and that's at 256 south 600 west of hayburn number to call 678-3122 can't miss them uh-uh 
uh-uh, right there on the Burley Paul Highway, K&R Rental. We have got a really interesting program today, and uh, Dave Beagle, my old buddy back in Indianapolis, is going to be on the air at 906. And then we're going to have Ralph Peterson come on the program at 9.30. And he's uh, kind of a spokesperson for we all need to trim down, slim down, uh, be more weight conscious, and talk about an obese America. And then at 10.06, we're going to be talking about limited government with the Pacific Legal Foundation. And then last at 10.30 this morning, Gabby Boucher is going to be talking about how and why the Roseanne TV series seems to have come back with a vengeance and really getting a lot of viewers because of their very not politically correct stance so we're going to talk about that hey don't forget our friends at ramsey heating and electric hello friends at ramsey heating and electric this morning at 2600 overland avenue in burley and of course uh, they're open at 7 30 in the morning till 5 monday through friday for all your heating cooling and electrical needs and i mean all they have the experience they have the knowledge and they have been serving people for almost 60 years wow they're good folks six seven eight zero four five nine the number to call ramsey heating and electric in burley serving you and boy do they serve you well okay and then also if you're a little bit hungry this morning and boy i gotta tell you uh breakfast at four o'clock in the morning and already here it is eight i'm hungry already hey denny's restaurant 611 north overland in burley and another location with thomas and the crew at 291 pole line road in twin falls i mean you go in you sit down you look at the menu and you start to drool that's okay That's okay, because everything is so delicious. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, anytime, all the time at Denny's Restaurant, which is also, you know, America's Diner. You stop in. It's the home of Zeb's Lunch Bunch, and we really are proud to have them on our program. Denny's Restaurant, 611 North Overland and Burley, serving you. Well, the good people, and I mean this in California are fighting back. I know many, many, many people in California that I've talked to that are absolutely mad isn't a good word. I mean, a fighting mad is even better against Governor Jerry Brown and the dictates of allowing California to be a sanctuary state and allowing sanctuary cities. They are fighting back against this pathetic attitude of the left and Governor Jerry Brown. And quite frankly, I think the people of California, the ones I talk to, they would like to create a force to have Jerry Brown driven from office. They can't stand him. It's the liberal influence in the state of California in the major populated areas that are causing the problems with the lawlessness and the lack of respect for our constitution and our laws. California towns are forming power groups, many of them. Escondido, as a matter of fact, a new town, or I should say city, that is forming a power group to fight back against sanctuary city policies. And this attitude is growing. It's not weakening. They are not being threatened by the governor and uh, the state politics to make them cower in the corner. As a matter of fact, it's making them even madder, and it's making them even tougher. Remember, sanctuary city policies protect illegal alien felons and criminals. And that's the truth. That's the bottom line. No one else. It provides a sanctuary to hide from the law and continue lawlessness. Now think about that. And continue lawlessness. Now the evil left, the Democrats, want open borders and more of what this policy is creating as chaos and havoc in our cities all across America. They want more of it. It's got to stop. It has got to stop. Calls welcome 436 
888-441-8669274587 please get on the phone line we all need to get involved i mean uh, i was talking to somebody on the phone yesterday that said and it drove me nuts well i i hate to get involved uh, i don't want to say anything that would hurt someone's feelings it's high time and past time to worry about hurting someone's feelings when the law is being broken there's a threat against our constitution and the value system of America. Stand up, speak out, for heaven's sakes. Caller, I'll be right with you. Don't forget Palmer L. Place, a place for senior living at 1301 Bennett Street in Burley. I have visited this location. Holly took Deanne and I around and showed us this location. It is absolutely excellent, offering the ability for seniors to maintain their independence both safely and comfortably. I urge you to call them and check it out. Don't live at home with all the risks, all alone, and not eating properly or taking your medicine. Check on Palmer L. Place. A place for senior living at 1301 Bennett Street in Burley, 677-8212. Also, quickly, I want to remind everybody about Dino Septic Service. We have had these great folks on our program for quite some time. I'm very honored to have their advertising, and they do a tremendous job for you. Dino Septic Service in Rupert, the number to call, 436-6526, or in Burley, Six seven eight one six three eight. Fast, fair, friendly service. That sums it up. They really care. They've worked for us, and they can do the job for you. With all the water and sewer lines installed, backhoe service, septic tanks and drain fields installed, septic tanks pumped. Yep, call them. And remember, six uh, seven eight one six three eight in Burley, four three six six five two six in Rupert, with the big truck that says "Smells Cargo" on the way. Dino Septic Service. Thank you for your patience, caller. Go ahead, please. They hung up, sir. <laughs> oh, did I make a mad bunky? No, I don't think so. Oh. I, I think that he might have just had a different call. Oh, and, well, maybe uh, was it Doug? It was Keith. Oh, it was Keith. Well, he had another call coming in. Oh, okay. Well, call back 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. And now listen to what else is happening in this country. And I absolutely, this ought to make everybody upset. 17 states. And somebody's got to call and explain to me why anyone would be upset about this. 17 states have filed a lawsuit against the Trump administration for there being a question of citizenship on the census. Why not? I do not understand why. I think you know the answer before I even go there, why the Democrats want everybody counted, whether they're illegal or not, because it draws more money from the feds into that area and helps support the liberal bias that's going on there. You know that's true. But they're filing suit against the question, are you a citizen of the United States? I would probably say, yes, I am. And you would, too. Oh, but these states say, well, you can't do that. Oh, my goodness. There's an inference there that it might hurt their feelings. Oh. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Zeb. Yes, sir. You know, here years back, and I can't even remember what years they were, but they had a governor named Gray. I mean, I can't think of what his first name is. Okay. But he was recalled. Uh-huh. Where are these people now that recalled him? Where are they? Well, the populace of Cal- you're talking about California. The populace of California, yeah. and wheels, we got a little feedback there, uh, is such that when you talk about L.A., Sacramento, and San Francisco, you're talking millions of people that are absolutely led by the nose. They're told when to take a drink of water, whatever. I mean, they're liberals in every sense of the word. And they diminish the value of the state of California, whether you're talking Bakersfield, Red Bluff, Clovis, Fresno. I can go on and on. Of all the great communities and people that are hardworking individuals that are taxpayers that are fed up with being hurt by liberal politics... Well, I think he's actually committed a crime by protecting these people. Oh, absolutely. The U.S. government says you can't do that. You know, Keith, 
I don't know if you and Nancy and other friends of yours like Donald Trump or despise Donald Trump for what he is as a person or has been, but I'm just going to say this. I don't give a doggone if he wears stripes and he's sitting in the Oval Office and he's making dictates that are going to make America great again and respect the law and the Constitution. I say, go get him, Tiger. Yeah, being a former businessman, I understand how he thinks. And I love this guy. He's not afraid. Look what he's doing in North Korea. Yeah. Uh, China, Russia, these places like this, other people say, oh, no, no, don't make him mad. Don't make him mad. Yeah. It's such a... It's such a farce, and this guy is afraid of no one. I think it goes without saying. No end. I think it goes without saying, Keith, and I think uh, I'll say this, and you can agree or disagree. Caller number two, I'll be right there. That Trump's attitude is such that I don't care if you like me or not, we're going to do what's best for America. Right on. Okay. Keith, God bless you, man. Good to hear from you this morning. Hope you had a good breakfast and have a great day. Thank you so much. I'm going to have it now. There you go. That a boy. That a boy. Caller number two, I'll be right with you. Don't uh, hang up, please. I hate empty lines. Salmon Selector Sale at the Lemhi County Fairgrounds, Salmon, Idaho, coming up next week. Fred Snook and the crew have got an outstanding sale of over 130 horses going through the ring at Idaho's premier horse sale and mule sale. They're going to have the big mule sale next Friday the 13th, and then the big horse sale on the 14th, and they're going to start everything off on April 12th, Thursday, with a great big parade, and they're going to have social hours and all kinds of fun things up there at the Salmon Select Horse Sale and Mule Sale for 2018 in Salmon, Idaho. Don't you miss it. Going to be a good one. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. How's my favorite rodeo announcement? Well, I appreciate that, Riley. I'm out of bed, alive and breathing air, man. I'm having a good day. Well, same here, upright. Anyway, what I called you about is a couple things. First thing that comes to mind, these people, liberals, or who, and uh, these millennials causing problems, remind me of uh, kids in a, in a classroom when they got away with so much through a substitute teacher. Now a real teacher steps in, and they got to try and show their authority to that that, that uh, authorial figure, the teacher being Trump. You know something, so Riley? Push him uh, around and dictate to him. I like, I like that. that. That is, a, we've got feedback again. Wheels. Uh, that is one of the best analogies I've heard in a long time. That the teacher left. It's uh, the teacher's on sick leave, and a sub comes in there, and the kids are tearing the place apart. Well, you know, and uh, he wants what's best. For 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 U.S. citizens, for for the United States of America, he honestly does. Yep. Think of all the millions and billions of dollars he has. He didn't need to take this. He really honestly didn't. <laughs> but you see the potential that could come, and these people who don't know what's good for them are fighting back and trying to be a a, a jerk just to prove that they're bigger and better and they can get what they want. When he's one saying, "Hey, listen, not head. If you sit down, shut up." And listen, what I'm trying to teach you, you can be so much better. You have so much more potential than you realize. I like that. Riley, you're always welcome with your viewpoint. Thank you so much. One other point, if I may. Yes. I I, I really like the idea of, and I would support 100% of Trump telling uh, California, well, you're not abiding by the law of the land, your federal grants, your federal monies, your federal incomes is gone. Yeah. I, I think there's got to be some kind of a slap on the hand with the ruler, and that ruler being federal funds, I agree with you. Very, very good call this morning, Riley. Thank you so much. You betcha. You have a good day. All right, sir. I like his concept there. It's very well said. Calls are welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. You know, there is a right and there's a wrong. And there's a black and a white on every issue. And I don't care if you're talking about the complete ridiculousness of transgenderism and all these different genders and everything. No, come on, let's just get to the bottom line here. There's a right and a wrong. 
and all through our world history and man on the earth, thanks to our good Lord above, there is a male, there is a female, there is a right, and there is a wrong, and there are consequences and laws and regulations that we in a civil society live by. And if we're going to get back to what was the main catalyst to make this country great, and it is, and it has been, and it will be, we need to stand firm for the laws and the Constitution and a value system that put us at the top of the pile as the greatest country in the face of the earth. And let these leeches and ne'er-do-wells go to the wayside. I have no time with those people. I will not waste time on those people. I will not adhere to their idiocy of political correctness. Ever. Nor should you. Calls welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Don't forget our friends at Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation. 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley. I love saying Suite 2 in Burley. And they can help you get back in shape, back in the game, back in life, enjoying life. I mean, <clears throat> excuse me, if you've had a surgery or an accident and you're not feeling really good, go to them. They've got the best of physical therapists. I mean, Nick Greenwell and the whole staff, they can help you get back to being you. Call for an appointment, 678 I'll repeat that number, 678-1191. Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley. Please call them today. Also want to remind you about Irvana. <clears throat> Excuse me, that frog in my throat. I think it's got to do with the springtime and allergies and everything. I know, but anyhow, I'll try to get by with it. Irvana is defined as the ultimate level of comfort you'll achieve with the presence of a new Lennox home comfort system. When you buy a new Lennox system at Ramsey Heating and Electric, you can get up to $1,700 in rebates. Airvana is just another way to make you feel better, so call Ramsey Heating and Electric today at 678-0459 or visit them on the website at ramseysonline.com. All right, calls are welcome and appreciated. 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. By the way, as if you were wondering this week what happened to Hillary... Well, she's back in the news again. You know, Hillary Clinton is just like having a really bad case of the flu. <laughs> just about the time you think you're on the uphill climb and going to make it, you get sicker. Well, just about the time you think she's going to go away and stay away, she comes back with idiotic statements about how it was everybody else's fault that she lost the election except her own. You know, she's condemning others for her loss and her lack of ability. You know, think about other elections, please, in the past. And I'm an old man, and I can remember way back to the Hubert Humphrey days and all those elections, etc. They didn't cry and whine and make excuses and go on the television and the radio and make quotes in the newspaper. Oh, I lost because of this for a year or so better after the election. The woman is a spoiled woman. The woman is someone that has always had her way and always had others conform to her whims and whams of whatever she wanted done. And I wish she would just go away. I saw a bumper sticker the other day. I was waiting for Deanne while she was in the supermarket. And this car pulled across the lane uh, in front of my pickup, and I sat there and looked at all the bumper stickers on the back of this car. Every one of them was a pro-support 
bumper sticker for Hillary. <laughs> And I thought, well, yeah, take the bumper sticker off your car. She's gone. She's a memory. She's history. Forget it. And then she comes out yesterday, and she started blaming Fox News again for her loss. I mean, ladies, I want this to go to the ladies. Wouldn't you just like to have the opportunity, honestly, to just tell Hillary to shut up? Calls welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Want to remind you, on Mondays, we give away a dozen cookies thanks to our dear friends over at Sophie's Chatterbox, 530 East Street, on the square in Rupert. Oh, good cookies. And they've got such a great bakery, and they've got such a great restaurant. You're going to love the food. I mean, they can bake anything, cookies, pies, biscuits, wedding cakes. Oh, the fancy fanciest of wedding cakes and it's always great 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 at sophie's chatterbox 530 east street in rupert really nice people all right it's your turn give me a call 436-224-1-866-927-4587 i want to also let you know that uh, I was on the phone this morning early to New York and Washington, D.C., confirming a lot of this, a straight-across-the-board approval rating right now for Trump shows that he has really had some escalating numbers, approval rating numbers, and he is at 50%. Now, a lot of you might say, well, how come he's not at 55 or 60? Listen, he's at 50%, which at this particular same time during the Obama administration, good old Barry was only at 46. So don't let the media throw everything into disarray and lie to you about Trump's numbers are so bad, he's the worst president of the United States' history. That's a bunch of bogus barnyard material. He's at 50%, and the numbers are going higher. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Deb. Um, at the senior junction on South Overland at noon today, we're having birthday and anniversary dinner, and that's a great dinner with Turkey and dressing, mashed potatoes and gravy and green beans and yummy dessert. Okay. Uh, just want to invite everybody to come on out and have lunch with us. Well, Joe, I'll send them over there to the Senior Junction on Overland for a great birthday and anniversary dinner today. And uh, Joe Taylor's got his arms waving in the air. He's signaling for you to turn in the driveway. I'll even buy lunch for a single or a couple that have never been there before. There you go. There's the incentive. First-timers, Joe Taylor's going to pick up the tab. And, Joe, God bless you. How you feeling this morning? Just great. All Ready right. Get with it. All right. <laughs> Take care, Joe. God bless you, man. Thanks. Bye. Great lunch today at that senior junction. Do- Joe Taylor, what a nice man. Calls are welcome, 436-224-1-866-927-4587. I have got to tell you about a story that last night I watched this and I thought, you've got to be kidding me. The left and some of the loons, like this Kathy Abreu that was on television last night, she's got eyes that make her look like she stepped out of a horror movie. Now they are going to start cracking down on what they call microaggressions. Do you know what a microaggression is? And they're going to start watching and listening to your speech. And if you use certain pronouns that they don't like, they're going to come after you. Caller, I'll be right there. Don't forget Barry Equipment and Rental. Sales, service, and parts, 159 West Highway 30 in Burley, and also at 465 Addison Avenue West in Twin, and up in Napa. Simply put, they have all the equipment you need, quality equipment and support from all their dealerships. And don't forget, to a lot of people are looking at the lawn going, got to mow, got to mow, got to mow. Well, get the Walker mowers. They've got them available ready for you. All your equipment rentals, Retail equipment sales, all of this and more at Barry Equipment and Rental. Burley, Twin Falls, and Napa, super people, 
helping you. Caller, good morning. How are you? Good morning, Mr. Bell. I'm good. Good. I'm in, I'm in trouble Trouble if they're going to uh, start, start listening to everything I say, but uh, I was wanting to call you. We can't can't get you in Almo and just barely get you in Balda this morning on the radio. Well, you know, I'm so going to... Just letting, letting you know. I appreciate that. I know who this is, and I'll be talking to the engineer after I get off the program this morning and find out why we're being restricted up in that area where it should be coming in great. Used to come in all the time up there, didn't it? It, it did. Very loud and clear, but uh, this morning, uh, not at all in the Almo area, and just barely in the Malta area. Well, I'll be talking to the engineer, and we'll get to the bottom of it and find out what the problem is. And, uh, by the way, as far as censoring our speech, I think it goes without saying that when you and I get together and we start talking, they'd really put us in a harness. <laughs> yeah, yeah they'd, they'd have us in a straight jacket. <laughs> uh, go rope something. Go rope something, yeah, buddy. Bye. Thanks. All right. Take bye. care. Yeah, bye. I apologize to my listeners up there in Elmo and Elba. I don't know why we have been curtailed coming up there with better reception, but I will call and find out, and we'll send the engineer uh, on his way to hopefully be the knight in shining armor and correct the problem. Uh, calls are welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Hey, the Bennett boys are going to have a great auction coming up this Saturday, the Gary Incorporated Auction at 11 o'clock Saturday morning. Caller, I'll be right there. Don't go away. It's located over in Castle Ford, Idaho, 3745 North, 600 East. Look for the signs of the Bennett boys auction service. Oh, my goodness, tractors and travel trailers, farm equipment, horse items like harnesses and all kinds of different things. This is going to be a great sale managed by the Bennett Boys Auction Service, and it's going to be at the Gary Incorporated Auction, 11 a.m. Saturday over in Castleford. Look for the signs. Don't forget the Bennett Boys Auction Service. No sale too big, no sale too small. The Bennett Boys, they sell them all. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Yeah, but... I, I'm on the, that last caller you had. Uh, I go over to show show every Monday morning, and for the last three weeks, when I get close to show show, uh, the static gets so bad I have to get another station. And so, uh, while you're checking, you might find out it almost sounds like they cut your power. Well, I will do some check, and I'll talk to Kim Lee after the program also. I have had some complaints for about the last two months in regards to uh, uh, lack of reception in certain areas, and we'll, I, I've got to get to the bottom of it, because first of all, I'm not an engineer. Secondarily, I shouldn't have to be, and thirdly, I want to make sure our audience is served. So I will find out about that, and I appreciate it. Well, and, and I appreciate you doing that, because... Uh I go over there every week, and, and it's, yeah, it's uh, I just miss you and want you to know that. Well, I, I need to know because it's an inflection on the program, a reflection on the program, and I'm not going to stand for it if there's a reason that it can be fixed. I appreciate what your call is, and by the way, how are you this morning? Well, I'm doing reasonably well, Zeb, and uh, appreciate you. You have a good day. I will, and God bless you, and say hello to that lovely wife of yours. I'll sure do that. All right. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Take care. Thank you. Uh, caller, you're on the air. Go ahead, please. Yeah, you know, you really brought up something that's really dear to my heart this morning, and that is about the bumper stickers. You know, a bumper sticker says so much. We don't even think about it at the time. But what about when you're in traffic or something like that and somebody cuts you off and they got a bumper sticker on there? Don't you always look at it to see what it says? I kind of, I, I used to make up a lot of bumper stickers, and quite frankly, on behalf of my company, and uh, especially when Obama was in office, I made up a lot of them, and I enjoyed every minute of it. I took a lot of heat over it from the left, but that's okay. I don't take their opinion seriously anyway. But uh, anyway, I, I do read a lot of bumper stickers. Some of them are extremely funny, some of them are very caustic, and some of them are really point on, and uh, I like them. 
I do too. But you know, just imagine yourself. You're you're caught in traffic there and everything, and and somebody cuts in front of you, or or they run the stop four way stop sign or something, and you look at the bumper sticker, and it may have a sign of a fish or any other religious confrontation. Yeah. And right away, you judge somebody by that, right? Well, I did the other day, as a matter of fact, at the supermarket when I saw that uh, Hillary for president, uh, Hillary's a great leader and all that, and I thought, I better wait and see what kind of a crackpot and a kook comes out and gets in that car. I guess you're right. Yeah, you know, years ago when Clinton was president, I found a bumper sticker down in a truck stop somewhere, and it said, impeach Hillary and her husband, too. (laughs) And I thought that was so cute, so I brought it back, and I give it to my friend Larry Cabe, who is located next door to my business. And he put it on his pickup. There you go. Well, we were over there one morning getting ready to go snowmobiling. And somebody come in the door and they said, Who belongs to that pickup out there with that sticker on there? And if you know Larry Cabe, he said, Yes, it is mine. And he more or less ordered him out of the place, you know. And we all laughed and everything. But... Some people get so angry. Oh, that's what that bumper sticker says. Well, you know, if you if you can't take the heat for what a bumper sticker says, don't put it on your vehicle. Keith, I got to run. Thank you very much for your call again. Stupid. All right, thank you much. Hey, don't forget Bob Nanini running for lieutenant governor. Idaho needs Nanini, proven effective conservative leadership, and he absolutely wants parental choice in education, and he wants to get back to the way things should be with our natural resources, roll back the zealous federal regulations, and also on health care, quality, affordable health care for the people here in the state of Idaho. Bob Nunini for a lieutenant governor, paid for by the committee to elect Bob Nunini to lieutenant governor, treasurer R. Scott Hogue. And also, again, don't forget our friends with Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox with the Airvana system, and if you buy a new Lennox system at Ramsey Heating and Electric, you can get up to $1,700 in rebates. Airvana is just another way to make you feel better. So call Ramsey Heating and Electric today at 678-0459 and also go to their website, ramseysonline.com. I got to get this in because it's very frustrating. My wife helped me this morning pull about seven pages no there's more than that there's eight pages here in a guide to responding to microaggressions this is for real folks the loony left is after anybody uh, that says the wrong thing in their opinion now microaggressions are commonplace verbal behavioral or environmental actions that communicate hostility towards oppressed or targeted groups. And two of those groups that feel like they're having hostility acted upon them are the LGBT and the transgenders. And they have come out and they have said, we cannot any longer stand... For people saying him, or her, or his, or she, or whatever. We have to stop this. So honestly, if you saw this on television last night, this wide-eyed, bug-eyed woman, Kathy Abreu, was advocating that there should be a crackdown on microaggressions that hurt, according to her, people's feelings that don't want to be subjected to how is he today or how is she today or him or her or whatever they want it stopped and they want to replace those words i couldn't make this up folks if i wanted to they want to replace those words with and i'm not kidding z or zo or yo 
How are, or I should say, let me see, let me put this in a sentence the way they wanted it. Is Z here today? Or is Zo going to be here tomorrow? Or other weird words instead of him or her or his or she? Now, you can't make this stuff up. We live in a loony world where people should respond to this kind of stuff. They should be put in rooms with mattresses. I'm telling you, this is absolutely insane. And I have this seven-page response, a guide to responding to microaggressions. And you need to read this, and you're just going to sit back on your hip pockets and go, the world is insane. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Hi, Deb. Hi. Well, when I was in school, which was a very long time ago, um, when we used to call people that were kind of different queer, and back then, when we, at least for me, when I didn't know for sure what they were, I called them it. And so why don't we just call them all it? I'm not opposed to that because I personally am not going to change my verbiage. I never will. Let's just kind of lay this out real quick before I do a weather forecast. Agree with me or not, there are two genders, male and female, from birth. Oh, my, that happens to be pure science. And on this program, we... Pardon me? That's also in the scripture. Absolutely, when God created the heavens and the earth and mankind and woman, I will not change anything. I will not be subjected to their silly foolishness about, oh, now we can't say him or her or she or whatever. Now we have to refer to people as Z or Zo. This is insanity, my dear lady. I think there's still it. I agree with you. I like your call. God bless you. Have a good day. Thank you. you. you Bye-bye. She's right. On this program, we are not going to ever change. You can send your nasty emails, of which I have some. You can make your stupid frivolous calls, bit my tongue, frivolous calls after the program, of which I will answer, and then I'll question you being a coward as to why you didn't call on the air. But we're not going to change. So don't try. Let's go to the weather. And the weather brought to you by Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. Oh, these are good people. And, of course, Rupert, right behind the Minidoka Hospital, across from the emergency room, and the number to call, 312-0957. I urge you to make an appointment with Dr. Pickup and Dr. Mitchell because you can trust your hearing health to them. They are very, very good. The number to call, 312-0957. Mount Harrison Audiology audiology and hearing aids right now here's the weather mostly cloudy skies as we hit to the middle of the week here's your weather forecast for zeb at the ranch mostly cloudy skies is what we're expecting for today winds out of the west southwest right around 10 miles an hour gusts possible as high as 26 miles an hour we are expecting a high of 57 tonight mostly cloudy skies with a low of 39 tomorrow We are going to have some rain showers in the forecast, maybe even thunderstorms by the afternoon. Mostly cloudy skies with a high of 58. 60% chance of rain showers for Thursday night. Cloudy skies with a low right near 44. For Friday, 20% chance of showers in the afternoon. Partly sunny skies with a high of 60. Friday night, we are expecting mostly cloudy skies with a low of 46. More rain showers expected for Saturday and a high of 58. That's your weather forecast for Zeb. Uh, thank you very much. You can absolutely trust your hearing health to two great doctors, Dr. Pickup and Dr. Mitchell, very skilled, very compassionate audiologists that will help you at Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. And the number to call to make an appointment, 312-0957. Oh, my goodness. The world is getting crazier and crazier. Good morning, caller. How are you? I am great. Yourself? Oh, peachy. This all comes from a group of people that says a 21-year or 18-year-old should not buy a firearm, but yet a 5-year-old can pick their gender. Yeah. (laughs) 
You know, Doug, it's not even funny anymore. It's beyond laughable as to where we are in a society. When you took high school biology and I took high school biology, there was a black and a white area on every subject. There was absolute truth and there was absolute falsity. And we went through and we learned. But now today, of course, like in the city of New York, there are what is accepted as 48. Now help me on this, Dougie. 48 genders that are acceptable. Would you please tell me how, from a male and a female, they got to 48 genders? Please help me, Doug. I'm in trouble. Well, they, they are mentally deranged. they got to be. Yeah. I mean, you, you want to change God's creation. When God created Adam, he made man, and then he made woman from Adam's rib. He didn't make any others. That was it. So they think that God is irrelevant, and they can change it. So it, it's, I think it's a deal to show that they are relevant to the world when they have nothing to offer. I, I, I think it's a cry for desperate help. To the point where, look at me, look at me, I want to be somebody, but I'm too lazy to really develop a career or a character or a personality. I think that's what they're saying. But when you sit there and we accept, we accept their idiocy and their filth, then we as a society really are to blame. Exactly. That means if, if you accept the sins of the world, then you are yourself a sinner. Well, I got to tell you this. I want you to respond to this real quick before I go to a uh, commercial. But in this microaggression guide that Deanne helped me put together, one of the things that we do supposedly to these people are micro insults. And here's one of the examples they gave, and I want you to respond to this. For example, a person might tell an Asian American that she or he speaks good English as a compliment. However, in reality, such a statement can be offensive to Asian Americans, implying that Asian persons do not speak clearly. Now, for those of us that are subjected to getting all of these calls in prime time rest at night between 7 and 9 with Asian voices that cannot speak clearly, I really don't care if I'm politically correct or not. No, I don't either. And that's just it. They, they are not raised in the manner where they can accept criticism. Yeah. I mean, they... If you criticize, then you are, you are mean to them, so they don't have to listen to it. Wait till they get out in the real world when a boss crawls down their throat because they didn't get a project done on time. They're going to see real criticism there or get fired. Yeah, and, and then I'd like to hear those people say, well, you called me a he or you called me a she, and that's a microaggression because I'm a zo or a z. Did you see that last night on television? I did. Oh! I did. And, and it's, it's so, it's a way out there. I'd like to know what these guys are smoking or or what drug they're taking when they're coming up with this crap. Looney Tunes was a cartoon series back in the 60s, and now they're reincarnating it with these people. I know it. Oh. I know it. They, they're, they're just, it's, it's a sad deal. And I think, too, on background checks, they should ask your political party, and if you're a liberal or a Democrat, you should be not denied access to a firearm because it is a mental disorder. I'm beginning to think 100% in that direction, but when I heard this last night with this loony, loose cannon, Kathy Abreu with the bug eyes, I about fell out of my lazy boy. Doug, I'm running really late. i got to run. Thank you. the way Tucker handles them. Uh, that was beyond handling. The only thing that he could have done better in handling her was to hand her a butterfly net. Exactly. <laughs> See you later. Hey, God bless and...
everybody, let's do what we can for our seniors. All right. Take care, buddy. Thank you. you Don't forget our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Roll into spring with a big spring tire sale. Holy cow, they've got all the tires for all your driving needs, for all your vehicles. That's not brag. That's a fact. Get in there today and check out the prices on the sale tires for your vehicle absolutely at all seven locations of your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. The best in brake service, front end alignment, shocks and struts, batteries, but above all, they really take care of you. The best in service. Stop in and see Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, Daniel on Pole Line in Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland in Burley, the best. Your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers. Going to run to the news. We'll be back in seven minutes. All good morning and welcome back. Zeb at the Ranch on a Wednesday, already April 4th. Oh my goodness, how time flies when you're having fun. All right, now I want to remind you that our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you with the best of a great big spring tire sale. You get in there and they can get you on the road safely with the best of tires. Also, don't forget some of our really good advertisers like Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, helping you get back to being you. We're going to have our dear friend Dave Beagle on with us in just a few minutes, but right now, this good word for Western Way Services. From the canyons of the Snake River and all across southern Idaho, we're always at your disposal. Western Way Services, we care about our community, our resources, and this free land. Western Way Services is lending a hand, always at your disposal. Western Way Services. You know, I've said for a long, long time, they are at Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Whether you get on the route service for the weekly garbage pickup or call them and you need a dumpster, maybe parked out behind your office window like mine and just pitch and throw, pitch and throw, pitch and throw, fill it up. They'll come and get it. Hey, I'll tell you what, they are so efficient at what they do in helping you handle your garbage problems. All of us have it. All of us need to get rid of it. Garbage, and they are excellent and always at your disposal. Call them at 734-6969, Western Way Services. Also want to remind you on Thursdays, we have developed a program segment with the Cache Regional Hospital, and they have provided us with excellent people to come on and inform you about all the excellent health care advantages, answers, and services at Cache Regional Hospital. Tune in at 917 tomorrow morning on Thursday and learn more about your friends, your neighbors at Cache Regional Hospital. Quality care, close to home. And before we go to Dave Bego, I also want to remind you, and a big thanks goes to Joel Heward and his family and his staff at Hanson Mortuary at 710 6th Street in Rupert. Number to call, number to remember, put it on your refrigerator. They are really great people to work with and serve you. 436-5636, Hanson Mortuary. Always... And I emphasize this, always treating your family with the highest ethical standards with unquestioned integrity. Please call them today and get more information. All of us should take the time to learn about pre-planning of funerals. And don't forget Hanson Mortuary at 710 6th Street in Rupert with Joel Heward. And Joel also serving you at Morrison Payne Funeral Home on East Main in Burley. Wednesdays, I save a special time for this man because he's a dear friend, author, and business entrepreneur. Good morning, Dave Vigo. How are you? I'm doing uh, fine, uh, Zeb. Uh, had a rough day yesterday, but I'm, I'm back at it. Well, what happened exactly as far as uh, you said you had some surgery? Would you care to give us kind of a thumbnail sketch what happened? Well, you know, when I was a little kid, I'd run around outside all the time just with uh, short pants and no t-shirt and I, I'm light skinned and that and uh, you know I got sunburned a lot back then and uh, um, 
I ended up having a little basal cell carcinoma uh, on my chest and on my uh, um, uh, back, and oh. uh, you know, which it's not. It's good. It's not melanoma because melanoma spreads throughout your body, and uh, but they wanted to get it off. And yesterday morning they went in and dug it all out, and uh, I was uh, I was in a fair amount of pain yesterday. So, needless to say, I hope everything is going to be good and well for you in the future. Yeah, yeah, they because basal cell, like I say, doesn't spread like uh, uh, melanoma does, which is good. But you don't want to leave it in there because it could cause uh, problems in those areas. And, right. uh, they say that um, you know they're ninety-five to one hundred percent confident that they got every bit of it out. So, well, yeah. I also have had a lot of those skin uh, cancer precancers uh, had to be frozen and cut off and everything. Right. And off my ears and off the back of my neck, and oh boy, I love being outside, but we do have to take precautions. Yeah, we do. I, I've had it cut off my ears too, and I've had the stuff where you know you got to rub stuff over your face twice a day for two weeks uh, to, to kill it off and that. But this, when when it comes down to a, a carcinoma, they just want to cut it out and they yeah. Get it. Yeah. Well, again, our thoughts and prayers are with you, and uh, hope that better days of feeling better are ahead for you, my friend. Well, I, I feel a lot better than yesterday, so I'm happy to be on your show. Yeah, you sounded like you were laying underneath a rock and you were playing rattlesnake. You didn't sound real good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got a question for you. I got a question for you this morning. Uh, I, I've had it. I'm not going to be at all amenable to the liberal left loons that are crying foul. I think we should tell them, step aside, or we're going to step over you. When this mob or this mafia of people saying they're going to march right into America and we can't stop them and they're going to demand that we take them in, they're going to demand that they get social services given to them, I say turn them around long before they get to the border and tell them to adios because they are not wanted here. What are your thoughts? Well, I agree with you 100%. And, um, you know, this was a big thing during the Obama administration that they let happen. And uh, um, I'm hoping Trump, and I saw him uh, uh, talk about it a little bit. Um, he's, uh, and this, and this, I got I to gotta tell you, this goes back to what I wrote in one of my blogs several years ago um, that. Um, he uh, he's going to put he wants to put the American military in charge of the borders and uh, just drive these people back and uh, and do it in the future too and that's what you really do, need to do besides the wall because um, you know they'll find ways under or over a wall where the American military they're not going to let anybody come across and they're going to drive them back and I hope he doesn't Dave Dave you and I are pretty close to the same age I'm assuming that you're quite a bit older but uh, I'm kidding. Uh, you and I in our lifetime, have you ever seen or heard of another country that would take the dictates of people that are illegal aliens to their respective country and take their demands and kowtow to their demands and sit back and say, y'all come on in because we're not going to do a thing to stop you. This is complete lunacy. Well, it is, and, uh, you know, but you have uh, these people in California, basically, where the um, they're controlled by the far left and the unions, and uh, uh, the unions want these people in because they see them as uh, future uh, union members to play, pay dues and uh, um, and stuff like that. And plus, they they use these people uh, to control control votes too. And um, that's what this is all about. It's all about politics and the future of the democratic. Well, the far left, uh, the deep state, yeah, and uh, the unions and. Uh, Soros and people like that that uh, want to control this country. But there are bright spots. As we speak today, Escondido, California, and uh, Los Alamitos, and many, many other cities and towns are forming power groups to fight back against the sanctuary city policies and Governor Jerry Brown. And quite frankly, I think we're going to see a real uh, kind of a resurgence of patriotism in the those cities and they may make sacramento and brown back up and start over on the monopoly board because they've had it yeah i think so too and it's good to see these people standing up there uh they're getting some backbone and they realize that uh 
they can't continue to be controlled and uh, pushed around by these people out there. And uh, I think that's a great thing. And I um, and, and, and as I've told you before, I'm seeing it across America too. People are tired of this stuff, and uh, we need them to, to stand up and really go after. Um, uh, these people on the left that are trying to bring down this country. You know, uh, Trump said, and I agreed with him uh, two days ago, that uh, he said, I've had enough. No, these people are not going to come across our borders. No, we're not going to be demanded to that we accept them. And Mexico had better turn them around and tell them, adios, go back to your home country. Or I might have some second thoughts on signing a new NAFTA bill, and it's not going to be very kind to Mexico. Oh, the left went wild. They started climbing trees and telephone poles and yelling from the mountaintops that Trump was absolutely ruining this country. I agree with him 100%. The Trump is ruining this country? No, no, no. Yeah, the left said that Trump is ruining this country because of his attitude against these uh, people coming across our border. And he warned Mexico in the possibility of a new trade agreement, the NAFTA agreement, hey, you stop them from coming through your country into ours, or the agreement's not going to be what you want. I agree with Trump, but the left went crazy. Oh, yeah, 100%. I mean, he's standing up. He gets it. And uh, what's good about Trump is is that he's a businessman. He understands what it takes to do things. He knows how to negotiate. He uh, he knows how to stand firm. And this is what we need in Washington because for too long we've had too many politicians that uh, all they want to do is keep their their spot in Washington. You know, and Dave, as a businessman, uh, you mentioned Trump. This man sits down, he analyzes, I've seen it, you've seen it, he analyzes what is best for this country. Everybody is just blowing a lot of smoke right now, saying that his uh, trade war with China is going to hurt us and everything. But for so many years, the percentages for foreign countries has been as much as 25 to 30, maybe even 45 percent in in favor of their trade versus ours. It's about high time we leveled the playing field. Well, that's exactly right. And, uh, you know, uh, bring uh, business and jobs back to this country and make these other countries uh, do things the right way. And, uh, you know, if they want to be as great as the United States, they're going to have to start uh, uh, looking at our um, uh, capitalistic free market system and, uh, you know, work in the same position. Absolutely. You know, it was kind of interesting yesterday when I started doing some research on Trump's approval rating. And a straight-across-the-board approval rating yesterday came out that shows that President Trump is now at 50%. And at the same time, during the Obama administration, he was only at 46%. But, oh, my goodness, the left commentators, the CNNs, the CBSs, the MSNBCs, why, they all came out, and they didn't avow that he had a 50% approval rating. They said Trump was the worst president ever in history. Yep, that's what they do. And uh, it's, it's sad that uh, they're being controlled behind the scenes and saying these things. And uh, instead of coming out and uh, being true Americans and telling the American people what's really going on. And, uh, but like I say, you know, and, and they keep talking about the deep state. And, uh, uh, you know, we're talking about the very far left progressives. I'm not talking about all Democrats because I know a lot of Democrats that are fed up with this stuff, too. And um, uh, it, it, it's, it's, t it's sad that these people in the press won't stand up and do the right thing and uh, um, push back against the deep state and uh, what's going on. Hillary's back in the news, David. She just won't go away. She's like a bad spring cough, allergic cough. You can't get rid of it, and we can't seem to get rid of her. Now she's back in the news again this morning, and she's decided to carry more of the blame for her loss over to Fox News. Is this woman ever going to go to the rocking chair, sit there quietly, and just fade away? I don't think so. I think that's who she is, and uh, you know, um, it, it's 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 sad that uh, at some point you have to look in the mirror and tell yourself that uh, you know it hasn't worked. I'm done, and I'm going to move on in life. 
and I just don't think she has that type of personality. For what purpose, though? I mean, why does she continually want to muck rake what happened in the last election and continually come out with excuses? I mean, I don't think that she's ever going to get a possibility of another nomination on the Democratic Party. So for what purpose does she want to continually be a thorn in everyone's foot? Because she thinks she knows uh, more than the rest of us, and she's smarter than the rest of us, and that she's just going to keep at it. And um, I think it's an ego problem. Mm, well, that goes without saying. Uh, well, let me ask you this question. What about the census form for 2020? And the question of which I see nothing wrong with, and I think it should be imperative that it's answered, are you a citizen of the United States of America? Now, you know as well as I that if everyone, and it went willy-nilly, everybody could just fill out the census form, even non-citizens, that would skew the amount of federal money that comes into certain areas, and it would mess up the whole voting precinct and district rates. What about this question? 17 states are filing suit against Donald Trump because his administration allowed this question on the census. What are your thoughts? No, I think it's something that should be on there, and uh, you know these states uh, and, and their and places uh, they're mostly Democratic controlled, and they want to do it because uh, they need the votes, and that's what this is all about. This is all about the votes, and um, uh, and, and some businesses, quite honestly, uh, Zeb, and, and we run up against it in our industry um, where people are hiring illegals and paying them under the table. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, they can do things a lot cheaper than other companies that uh, are paying people the right way and, and doing things the right way. And that's what this stuff is all about, instead of doing the right things and following our laws in this country. And um, I think this needs to push through and go through and uh, lead us in the right direction. What did you think of the story that came out yesterday that uh, the Republicans, the GOP, and also the Democrats, they're basically looking at a seven-month hiatus of not doing a doggone thing for you or I or for America because they're very timid right now about doing anything or shake, rattling, and rolling the boat before the midterms in November. I was furious when I heard that. Yeah, this is uh, the problem we have in Washington, and uh, I've said this many times, and, uh, and I'll continue to say it, is we need term limits, and, um, you know, we need to um, set things up so that people want to go to Washington to do the right things for this country and spend their terms there and then go back to um, private enterprise. And, um, um, you know, uh, but when you have situations in Washington where uh, uh, congressmen and senators go there and, uh, you know, they get these uh, very uh, high salaries and the health benefits that are better than uh, normal people can get. And, uh, you know, they get um, uh, their salary for life and uh, even after they retire and stuff like that. Uh, this is crazy. And all this stuff needs to be reversed so that, uh, again, we have people that go there and do the right things for America and they go back to the private work. If they're going to have a hiatus from their job of being a representative or a senator, then I would like to entertain thoughts that we demand that they go on a hiatus from their salary. Yeah, I, and I agree with you. And um, so, you know, I, I know Trump wants to go there because I saw something come out um, with a list of things he wanted to do, and it, and it was wiping out the things that I talked about uh you know, their high salaries and their pension plans and their health care plans and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I, I even uh, mentioned that in the blog several, several years ago. And uh, I hope he can work towards getting that stuff done so in the future we have people uh, in Washington that want to do the right things for this country. You know, let me ask you this final thought this morning. Uh... And it seems like the cowards on the left, they always wait until after my program to call me and then argue with me, or they send emails after I'm off the air. I wish they would have the backbone and the spine to call during the program. But give me your honest appraisal of what you think so far of the Trump administration. I will say this before you answer. I think, yes, 
there's a lot of shakeups. I think, yes, he's trying to find the best people for the various jobs. I think the Democrats have foot-dragged or knuckle-dragged through this whole first part of his office as president. And I think the guy's doing a pretty darn good job of trying to restore the image of America is the number one country in the world. What are your thoughts? No, I agree with you 100%. But, uh, you know, you're going to have this when you go through. And, you know, he's transitioned from... uh, the business world or the political world, and he's tried to bring in people he thought would be right, and uh, they're not working out uh, the way he, um, he had hoped they were. And uh, you're going to have those type of shakeups because uh, um, you know he wants people that uh, uh, think more like a businessman and, and doing the right things for this country. And you know some of the people he's brought in have kind of got off on the wrong track. And uh, so you know it's. Uh, I think we'll continue to see some changes, but uh, hopefully he gets it settled down and uh, really moves forward strong. What about your thoughts on one person in particular that I thought he would be tougher from the get-go? I thought he would really be an example of what an attorney general should be and act like. I'm having second thoughts about Jeff Sessions. What are your thoughts? Yeah, at times I do. Um, Although he's a smart man and in you know, we'll, we'll see where he goes with a couple of these things. I hope he, um, um, again, uh, straightens up and firms the backbone and does the right things. Um, uh, I guess we'll find out here as, uh, as this moves along. Okay. Now, I want you to take care of yourself, old buddy, and make sure that uh, you feel better. And uh, I hope all goes well and we can have a good visit again next Wednesday right here on Zeb at the Ranch. Well, thank you and uh, enjoy it. By the way... You didn't bring it up, but did you get the email I sent you on 4-H out there? I did, and we're going to do a story on that, and I'm getting more information. As a matter of fact, I'm calling the leadership of the 4-H groups here in the state of Idaho, and next Wednesday I'll have much more information to share with you. Okay, sounds good. All right, buddy. You have a good week, and thank you very much. Oh, and by the way, would you please do something to shake up the Cubs' bat rack so they can learn how to hit with those things? (laughs) I'll tell you what, Zeb, I think you ought to send them a a whole case of tennis rackets. (laughs) They'd miss it then, (laughs) Bigo. I tell you, they're (laughs) terrible this year. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Dave Bigo, Indianapolis, Indiana. Thank you. A good friend of mine, and uh, always look forward to Wednesdays. Dave Bego back in Indiana. Thank you very much. Holy cow, i got to pay some bills here. I'm running late. Don't forget our friends at Ark Animal Hospital, a mixed animal practice, meaning big or small. They love them all, and they take care of them. you got a little bitty kitty cat or a puppy. Oh, and by the way, don't forget to get those puppies vaccinated for that parvovirus. They can take care of them. you got rope and steers, horses, whatever, Dr. Bill and the crew. They will take care of them and keep them healthy. Absolutely. They're located at 750 21st Street near Connection Credit Union in Hayburn, Ark Animal Hospital. And the number to write down and remember, 678-1177. They, at Ark Animal Hospital, have the warm hearts for the cold noses. Don't forget, hey, I'll tell you what, I don't know if this guy's nose is cold or not, but he's a doggone good senator, and that's Kelly Anthon, and we need to get him back into the Idaho Senate. He is running again to serve you, absolutely, and he wants to make sure that his conservative values are working for you in his pro-Second Amendment stance and also laws that should be good for families here in the state of Idaho and also help fight for low predictable taxes don't forget kelly anthon as senator again going back to serve us these of course paid for by the committee to elect kelly anthon idaho state senate there's a good man right there kelly anthon let me just kind of do a quick review of where I am and where I should be, according to my log sheet. And right now I'm going to ask Wheels over at the main studio if he would please play this good word for Bob Nonini. Bob Nonini, candidate for lieutenant governor, a principled conservative, successful small business owner, legislator, and leader in Idaho. Bob Nonini has earned a 100% rating from the American Conservative Union and received an A-plus rating from the National Rifle Association. Bob Nonini, Idaho Roots, conservative values, proven results. 
Hi, I'm Bob Nonini, and I'm passionate about becoming your next Lieutenant Governor. Being an Idaho native, I grew up understanding the values of hard work and dedication. Overzealous federal regulations have driven natural resource-based industries out of Idaho. As Lieutenant Governor, I will advocate for legislation allowing these industries to responsibly operate, providing jobs and continued economic growth. Idaho needs strong leaders who allow their faith, experience, and integrity to do what is necessary in creating a better life for our residents. Experience matters. Experience counts. The choice is clear. Idaho needs Nonini on May 15th. Paid for by the committee to elect Bob Nonini for lieutenant governor. Oh, uh, thank you. Treasurer. Oops, excuse me. I interrupted the treasurer. I apologize. Thank you very much for that good word. Hey, don't forget yesterday we started our programming with Vicky's Country Garden every Tuesday at 9.30. Don't forget to tune in for the lovely Miss Vicky at Vicky's Country Garden, 185 South 600 West of Paul. Oh, boy, celebrating 21 years in business. Vicky's Country Garden over in Paul every Tuesday helping you to grow a better garden right here on Zebeth Ranch. And a real quick note before we go to our guest, I want to remind you about Lease Furniture Floors and More at 459 Overland and Burley. Hello, Jeff Bronson. How are you and the rest of the crew? It is spruce up for springtime. Say that fast five times. At Lease Furniture Floors and More, they've got a great, great selection of sofas, Love seats, recliners, anything you're looking for. I mean, when you talk about recliners, you got to go in there and try them on. Absolutely. And also, don't forget, they've got all the mattress specials and the dining room sets. It's time. It is time to spruce up for springtime at Lee's Furniture Floors and more. 459 Overland in Burley. You stop in and see those great people today. Really, really nice folks. One more good word. My guest is probably saying, when is he going to shut up? Well, I'll be there in just a minute. Don't forget Let's Ride, 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the World. They're open Monday through Friday, 9 to 6, Saturdays 9 to 4. And believe me, they have all the four-wheelers, all the side-by-sides. They've got a fantastic accessory department, and if you already have a four-wheeler, you need to get it serviced before you go up in the hills this spring and summer. Hey, what a service department. Best doggone service department around. Where? At Let's Ride, 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the World, where the fun is sold. Really good people. Right now, we're going to go to the phone line, and I do not think I've ever had this gentleman on my program before, and I'm looking forward to having him on the air this morning, a life transformation expert. Wow, that sounds pretty heavy. Good morning, Ralph Peterson. How are you? I'm doing very well. How are you, Seb? Not too bad. Uh, Ralph, what are we going to be talking about this morning? Is America too fat and we all need to go on a diet? What's happening here? Well, I'll tell you, I certainly was too... I had to go on a diet. I can't speak for anyone else. Okay, but now I'm I'm a guy that's probably five uh, eleven, and I weigh two hundred and twenty two pounds, and I've lost uh, quite a bit of weight since I had some heart problems a couple of years ago. What about obesity? Is it a national wide epidemic like everybody thinks it is? Give us kind of a thumbnail sketch. Yeah, I think it is. I think the the grab and go mentality. The you know we we put too much trust on our food producers to decide how much food should be on our plate, what we should be eating, and how often. Okay, well, when you say that, elaborate. Don't just leave it in mid-sentence. Kind of give us an explanation of why you think that. Well, I mean, every time I go to a restaurant and I order a meal, they decide how much food is on that plate. And... Being the, the good boy I was always raised to be, I had to finish everything on my plate. The, the person producing the food hasn't, they don't know my history, they don't know if I'm battling weight, they don't know if I've had enough when half the plate's gone, or if I need more and need to order another plate. Yeah, but Ralph, aren't you subjecting the restaurant business into basically catering the amount of food that you want? What about other people that are really hungry, they don't get a chance to eat out very often, and they want to sit down to a good plate of food? No, I absolutely agree with you. I, I'm not trying to say that it's the responsibility of the restaurant or the, 
the chef to put on, but it is my responsibility. Uh, we were talking about how easy it is and uh, uh, to be overweight. It's because we're always relying on other people to make those food decisions for us, and we need to make those food decisions for ourselves. Okay, but how do we change society? Uh, I know there is a problem with obesity, but I'm just going to start this off by saying this. I think a lot of the problem with the kids being obese or overweight today is because of a lack of exercise, a lack of getting outside, a lack of a coordinated play schedule, a lack of a physical fitness program within the schools, and I could go on and on. Do you agree or not? I partially agree. I agree that, that those things are important, but I do not think that's what's making America heavy. I think it's poor food choices. I think it's eating while we're being inactive. We're just constantly eating the garbage that's put in front of us. And listen, all the great companies out there, all the fast food companies, they are fantastic. They're great at marketing and getting parents to not think, to not do. To just, you know, the whole slogan for fast food companies is, we know that you're busy. We know that you've had to work late today. We know that you don't have time. You have starving kids at home. Come and let us do it for you. Okay. But there again, though, doesn't it go back to perhaps better parenting, people taking the time to say to little Johnny and Susie, no, you're not going to be on your smartphone. No, you're not going to play on your computer. No, you're not going to sit there on the phone with your friends. You're going to come to the kitchen table and you're going to eat the meal we fix. Absolutely. And too often what I see is not enough parents are even preparing the meals. Instead, they're bringing the meals home. They're ordering in, or they're picking up takeout on the way home. I agree with you. The parenting is the the issue here when it comes to children. But I was an overweight adult. I was obese at forty two. Okay. Now, when you say you were obese, you kind of left it hanging there. Uh, give us some parameters. How big were you, and how much did you lose? I weighed 350 pounds. Oh, my. I had a 48-inch waist. I had a 22-inch neck. I now weigh 200 pounds. I have a 34-inch waist. And i got to tell you, I, I did it by taking personal responsibility, by figuring out what I needed to do, not what others needed to do for me. Like I said in the beginning, I used to go to a restaurant. Whatever they gave me, that's what I ate. You can't, you can't do that. You've got to know how much food you need to have every day and then only eat that amount of food. Yeah, but Ralph, wait a minute. You, you saw the light, and I don't know if it was a train coming at you at the end of the tunnel or if you saw the light uh, to change. What caused you to look in the mirror and say, hey, wait a minute. This is my responsibility, not somebody else's. Well, I've always known it was my responsibility at some level. But I got to tell you, like, I was married and I had friends and I was, you know, at a really close knit community around me. And I always kind of waited and thought somebody was going to come to my rescue. Somebody was going to help me put the fork down. Somebody was going to have the one on one conversation with me. And here's the truth no one ever did. I probably wouldn't have been receptive to it anyway. And it wasn't until I had a pretty bad, I had a little bit of a drinking problem. And by a little bit, I mean a lot. And I had a, a big wake-up uh, wake up situation happened to me when I was on my 42nd birthday, and I realized nobody's coming to my rescue. Nobody's going to do it for me. I am either going to have to do it for myself, I'm either going to have to get tough or die fat. That's it. Yeah. Well, I will interject here that after I had a heart attack, I made a conscientious effort. I've always been very active. I've always uh, done a lot of things outside that take a lot of strenuous exercise, but it wasn't really a comprehensive exercise program. Now, I get up in the morning and walk about a half a mile, and by the way, I'm on crutches, so walking a half a mile is not very easy. And number two, I watch what I eat. I eat a lot of proteins. I'm very conscious of what I eat eat and i have dropped in the last 18 months over 31 pounds that's fantastic you're but, doing it all the right way but you've got you're to exercise you're eating you're making good food choices and despite your limitations and the crutches you're still getting out there and moving more 
Congratulations. That's really great. That's good. Well, I'm not trying to sound like I'm bragging about myself, but I went back to the, I had a broken knee and a broken hip a couple of years ago, along with a heart attack, and it was really hard to move around. And once I got that new knee and that new hip, I said, I don't give a rip about whether it's painful or not. I need to get out and walk, and you will find me at 4.30 in the morning walking around my great big circular driveway. I have it measured out as to how much is a tenth of a mile, two tenths tenths of a mile or whatever and i'm out there boogieing in the dark so i am committed to more exercise i love it i and, and, and i bet you know exactly what everybody in this situation learns is it's hard work but it's worth it you are worth it well, your whole lifestyle changes when you have a weight problem or you're sedentary and you're not doing anything. That's why I said earlier, Ralph, that no matter what anybody says, you cannot diet without exercise. Completely agree. Well, I wrote 50 rules on how to win at the game of dieting, and one of my rules is to quit the gym, which may seem counterintuitive, but I think For me, I always waited to go to the gym. I was always going to work out when I got there. And the problem, of course, is I never got there. So I quit the gym and started doing exactly what you're doing. I started to get up early and go for a walk. And at first, I could only walk, you know, a half a mile, 30 minutes or so. And eventually, I got to where I could jog a little bit. I answered my first 5K, and I just ran my 40-second full marathon. You know, and when you say that you were at 350 pounds, I cannot imagine ever being that heavy. When I got up to over 247, I said, that's it, no matter what, I quit. What's it like to put on that much weight? I mean, really, 350 pounds, that is, I just can't understand losing that much. I hit 350 pounds a couple of times. Wow. Even worse than that. I would play the yo-yo game where I would diet and I would lose weight and I'd get down to around a size 44. I'd get down to like 280 pounds. And then something would happen. I would start saying, you know, forget this and forget that. And I would throw my diet out the window. And it did not take long to put all the weight right back on. Do you th- a few times. Do you think, Ralph... Do you think, Ralph, that people that have a weight problem, do they need to go through these special weight-reducing clinics or take and buy uh, a very expensive weight-reducing food? What, what would you suggest to people? You know, actually, what, what's really helped me is way back when I was 30 years old, I took a smoking cessation class on how to quit smoking. And the things that I learned on how to quit that addiction have really helped me. It helped me quit drinking, and it helped me quit me overeating. And it was simple things like learning what stress is and how to deal with stress in a non, you know, non, a non-drinking, non-smoking, non-overeating way. How to set yourself up like the simple act of when you're done eating, get up and start doing the dishes because it's impossible to keep eating when your hands are in warm, soapy water which, by the way, leads me to one of my rules, throw away your dishwasher. You should just use your hands to do your dishes because you shouldn't be sitting at the table bored with more food at the table. So I don't know that it's all these big programs. I follow Weight Watchers, which isn't very expensive, but I I didn't have surgery. I didn't take a magic pill. I I started writing down, figuring out how much food I needed a day. Yeah. How much food I needed to lose, 5 pounds, 10 pounds. I started to track everything I ate. I stopped hanging out with people who overate. I can't, I'm, I'm, I get easily influenced by people when I go to a restaurant with them. If they're going to eat poorly and order the cheeseburger and french fries, so am I. If they're going to order the chicken wings, so am I. It's better for me to eat alone and to get new friends than it is to hang out with them. The same thing with the gym, and I... The gym just doesn't work for me. Walking works for me. All right, well, let me ask you this then, Ralph, and this isn't so much a question as it is a statement that you can tear apart, if you will. I maintain that uh, even though I'm on a strict diet that I've imposed on myself and I know exactly what I'm going to eat and not going to eat, that if I develop a craving 
whether it's for a great big steak dinner or whether it's for a great big bowl of ice cream, I'm going to have that ice cream or I'm going to have that great big steak dinner, but on a limited basis, maybe once or twice a month at the most, and then fall back into my diet mode. And I ascertain to you that will not hurt you. I completely agree. I completely, I think that's, so I've tried every diet, and most diets are super restrictive. I've done the paleo diet. I've done Atkins diet. I've done the South Beach diet. I've, the whole, I've done all kinds of diets where, the F factor diet, where you're pretty restricted on what you're, Weight Watchers makes it easy for me because I can have, to your point, whatever I want, as long as it's still within the guidelines of how much food I should be having. And everybody has a cheat day. I don't have a whole cheat day. I say have a cheat meal, lunch. I cheat on lunch all the time. I don't cheat on myself. But I agree with you 100%. You know, when you look at the uh, statements that are made by various companies that want to sell you the food and sell you the diet, what they don't say, and again, these are my words, you can criticize me, what they don't say is if you get off the program, you may be very susceptible to putting on the weight 10 times faster. I always did. Every time I stopped a program, like Atkins was always my worst one. Every time I stopped doing Atkins, I would gain more weight than I lost. It never failed. And the reason, I think there's a bunch of reasons for it, but the first one is that it was just too, it wasn't sustainable to me. Eating just meat and just protein, I wasn't raised that way. I don't live near a butcher shop. I, I'm, I, 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 too many options to have pasta and bread and rice and vegetables and fruit and, and quite frankly enjoy all that food. And so I, I agree. The same thing happened to me every time. But here's here's let me say this. Here's the most important takeaway I think when it comes to any diet. To pay attention to how much you should be having. And that is for Weight Watchers we track points. But it doesn't matter if you're tracking points or calories or carbs or protein. You really, for me, I really have to track. I have to track every single day or I will gain weight. If I don't pay attention, I gain weight every time. Absolutely. Let me ask you this. Uh, what about your books? What about following you? What about learning more about you and what you've done? I know that you're a syndicated columnist and a motivational speaker and author of two books. Where can people find your books and what will they learn from reading your books? Uh, you can find me, at, you can go to adventuresindietland.com or on any of the social medias, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. It's Ralph Peterson 08. And the Adventures in Dietland, this is, this is the big takeaway for Adventures in Dietland. Every diet I've ever tried, and I do not have a new diet. I follow Weight Watchers religiously. But any diet that I've tried, all work, everything works. Herbalife works. The F-Factor diet works. Paleo diet works. The whole 30 works. Every one of them works. You have to find one works for you. But the challenge that I've always had is diets are really great at telling you what to do, what to eat. They are terrible at telling you how to do it. How do you become good at dieting? How do you win at the game of dieting? When, what day of the week is best for you to start a diet? The answer for me is a Friday. You should always start a diet on Friday. You should go and get to know your doctor. You should... Get new friends. You should take the stairs. You should stop taking shortcuts and cutting across the grass. You should stop supporting the Girl Scout troops and buying cookies just because they're cute and adorable and come to your door. That's what you're going to learn if you read my book. You're going to learn my 50 tips, my 50 rules on how to win at the game of dieting. Absolutely. How to do it. Well, where can the book be obtained? Please tell us that. Barnes & Nobles, Amazon. It's on Audible right now, so you can go to audible.com. It's on iTunes. It's a Kindle version is available. You can get it directly from all of those places. You can go to Barnes & Nobles, they carry it. Amazon, everywhere. Well, I'll tell you what, Ralph, I'm going to have you back if you'll consent to come back in the future and we'll talk more about this. And I wish you a lot of success and thank you for taking the time to be inspirational on the program this morning. Wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Ralph Peterson, and uh, excellent man talking about obesity, losing weight, and enjoying your life more. 
Absolutely. Appreciate him being on the program this morning. I'm going to have him back. Good old boy right there. We'll have him We'll have him back right before Thanksgiving and Christmas. That'd be a great time, wouldn't it? Oh, my. Let's see. we got to get a weather forecast on here. And the weather is brought to you by some really good friends of mine and yours. And I'm talking about Phillips Oaks Goodwin Crane and Company, providing accounting services to the Minicash area for well over 50 years years. I mean, they know. They know. Tax return preparation, tax planning, business consulting, financial statement preparation, retirement planning. Work with the people that know and the people that can help you, your family, and your business. Phillips Oaks Goodwin Crane and Company with offices in Burley and Rupert. Right now, here's the weather. Mostly cloudy skies as we hit to the middle of the week. Here's your weather forecast for Zeb at the Ranch. Mostly cloudy skies is what we're expecting for today. Winds out of the west-southwest, right around 10 miles an hour. Gusts possible as high as 26 miles an hour. We are expecting a high of 57 tonight. Mostly cloudy skies with a low of 39 tomorrow. We are going to have some rain showers in the forecast, maybe even thunderstorms by the afternoon. Mostly cloudy skies with a high of 58. 60% chance of rain showers for Thursday night. Cloudy skies with a low right near 44. For Friday, 20% chance of showers in the afternoon. Partly sunny skies with a high of 60. Friday night, we are expecting mostly cloudy skies with a low of 46. More rain showers expected for Saturday and a high of 58. That's your weather forecast for Zephyr. Thank you, thank you, Gina. I appreciate it. Brought to everybody by some really top-notch professionals that can help you starting a business, a partnership, or trying to expand and your business, all of these things and so much more can be assisted by Phillips Oaks Goodwin Crane and Company. Providing accounting services to the Minicash area, it's tax time. I hope they're working for you, Phillips Oaks Goodwin Crane and Company. All right, we've got, excuse me for the frog in my throat, Uh, we've got time for some people to give us a call, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. You know what I did, though, when I lost all that weight? During the time that I reached the highest point of being overweight to now when I've lost all that weight, I went into the closet and pulled out all the almost brand new Wranglers that were 34 34s and I gave up 34 36s pardon me and I gave them to my son Jake thinking I would never lose the weight now I've lost all the weight and I think I gave my kid over $300 worth of Wranglers give them back I can wear them now anyway don't forget Cameron and Siemens Insurance, life insurance, health insurance, retirement planning, employee benefits, all of this and so much more at Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. These folks are so dedicated and responsive to helping you, very devoted to serving others. All you need to do is call, make an appointment at 436-4424. That number again, 436-4424, Cameron and Siemens Insurance in Rupert. Holy cow, what do we got coming up next hour? While I'm waiting for some of your phone calls right now, I want to remind you that we have Timothy, I think this is his last name, Snowball. Timothy Snowball with the Pacific Legal Foundation and talking about limiting government powers. And then at 10.30 this morning, we're going to have Gabby Boucher on the air, and she's going to be talking about how come... Roseanne TV show is really hitting the viewers right between the eyes, and they love it. The audience rating numbers are way sky high. So we're going to be talking about that. Uh, Another reminder also is that coming up next weekend, not this weekend, next weekend, the great big salmon select horse sale. Mm -mm 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 -mm. This is a ripping good horse sale, Idaho's premier horse sale, up at the Lemhi County Fairgrounds in Salmon, Idaho. It's going to be on Thursday the 12th all the way through Sunday the 15th. Wow. 
Fred Snook and all of his folks have really put together a huge horse and mule sale for this year. Now, they're going to sell the mules on Friday the 13th. Hmm, I forgot that was Friday the 13th. Anyway, their mule sale, they're going to have all kinds of special events during the day. And then the big horse sale on the 14th. Holy cow, you don't want to miss a minute of it. All of this and a lot of fun going on at the Salmon Select Horse Sale, Lemhi County Fairgrounds and Salmon, April 12th through the 15th. Be there. All right, I've got time for one quick call. Come on, give me a jingle. Be the lucky number and give me a call right now, if you would, please, at 436-224-1866-927-4587. A couple of public service announcements that I need to get on. This will probably be the last time because I think they're almost filled up on this course. I'm not sure. But as you know, or maybe you hadn't heard, I don't know, that Kelton Hatch with the Idaho Fishing Game, he's on here once a month with us. He is turning into a college professor. I'm not kidding. Big, incredible hulk. Kelton Hatch. And he's got a college credit course called Wild About Fishing. It's a workshop that's going to be held at the Jerome Department of Fish and Game on Friday afternoon and Saturday, April 13th and 14th. And you don't want to miss this. All you need to do to register for this class is call 324-4359. And honestly, I'm telling you the straight truth, Kelton Hatch is going to be the teacher. All right, caller, good morning. You're on the air. How are you? Well, I'm pretty good. But you know how to really lose weight? You don't eat as much. You know, there's a lot of different ways that we can lose weight. But one of them is go to your thrift store like the Desert Industries or something like that and get one size smaller pants or two sizes, something like that, and then... Try to button them up every morning. You know you're overweight. You can tell when you're overweight and you try to get a pair of Wranglers on and you have to lay flat on your back on the bed, use a vice grips and a pliers to get them closed. Well, when I was in Las Vegas this when I was at the Desert Industry store, and they had a practically a brand new pair of Wranglers. Uh-huh. 30 36. Uh-huh. I wear a 38. Okay. But these things had always been dry clean, had the nice crease in them and everything. I got to have them. $4. Wow. And I'll tell you what, I was determined to where I could get into them, and I'm wearing them today. Boy, I'll tell you what, uh, I'm congratulatory towards you and your weight loss, and I'm also going to pat myself on the back, and uh, the old adage that if you hang those jeans up in the closet, they'll shrink. No, it's us that needs to lose the weight. Keith, God bless you. Thank you for your call. No, just one more thing. Quickly. I admire you to no end for being able to get up in the morning when it's so cold and windy and everything. And to walk around that driveway for a mile or so, I couldn't do it. Well, my wife is my wife is my inspiration, Keith. She's got a great big twenty foot bull whip, and she always walks behind me. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your call, my dear friend. Thank you. Uh, we've got a scoot to the news and CBS coming up next, and then we'll be back in about seven minutes right here on Zeb at the Ranch. Don't go away. It's cloudy, overcast, and, well, it's a little better than yesterday and the day before, but uh, we'll see what happens. Good morning, good morning to you, Zeb at the Ranch, hour number three, and, of course, our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations with a great big, I mean really big, spring tire sale going on right now. You stop in and see them today. Also, some of our great advertisers, Burley Fitz. Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, helping you get back to being you. By the by, before we go to our guest, I want to remind you about Airvana. Airvana, defined as the ultimate level of comfort. 
that you will achieve, I choked to death right there, excuse me, that you'll achieve with the presence of a new Lennox home comfort system. And when you buy that new Lennox system at Ramsey Heating and Electric, you can get up to $1,700 in rebates? Whoa! Airbon is just another great way to make you feel better. So call Ramsey Heating and Electric today at 678-0459 or go to their website, ramseysonline.com. There is going to be another great big sale coming up on this Saturday put on by the Bennett Boys Auction Service. It's the Gary Incorporated Auction, 11 a.m. Saturday, this coming April 7th at Castle Ford at 3745 North, 600 East. Look for the sale signs. They're going to have lunch by the cook shack. They're going to have tractors and travel trailers. And they're going to have all kinds of farm equipment. They're going to have horse items, a lot of harness. They're going to have miscellaneous items you better be there gary incorporated auction this coming saturday april 7th managed by the bennett boys auction service no sale too big no sale too small the bennett boys sell them all caller good morning i think we have with us right now from the pacific legal foundation and i've been looking forward to this guest all week long timothy snowball with the pacific legal foundation and talking about the government power must be limited amen brother from the back pew good morning timothy how are you Doing very well, Zeb. How are you? Fantastic. But when somebody talks about limiting government power, I'm all ears, man. I'm standing here listening to you. Give us a thumbnail sketch of what that means. Well, sure. You know, I decided that I wanted to, you know, with the kind of the conflict going on in modern politics, that it was important to kind of get back to first principles. So I decided to write a blog series um, on our PLF website, kind of starting out at the beginning, you know what I mean, where, where certain ideas... Um, that America is founded on, where those actually come from, and, and what uh, effect that has on our form of government, and what the basis is, I think, for arguing for a more limited form of government based upon that history and those principles. So I'll tell you, uh, for Jefferson and, and the founding fathers, the, you know, the rights that we have certainly didn't come from the government. Um, I think you can look at the history of the 20th century and, and see what the effect of that kind of system is. If, if the government grants rights and grants them as privileges, then the government is free to revoke those privileges at will. And if government, uh, according to Jefferson, like the plan that he lays out in the Declaration of Independence, if rights are a gift of God or if they derive from man's nature, then government can't do that. Government is put into place to protect our rights. You know, when you start talking as not only a lawyer, but also someone that has studied this issue, and you talk about rights in this country, can you give us a short definition of what those rights are and how they are afforded and provided to people that live as citizens in America? Sure, sure. I think that, uh, again, it's instructive to go back to you know the ideas behind the Declaration of Independence. So when the founders speak about rights, and when you hear rights referenced in the, in the original founding documents, what the difference between these rights and what some would claim as rights today is, those original rights were conceived as negative rights. And what this basically means is, and you can reference this when you look at the, at the Bill of Rights in the Constitution, this is a list of things that the government may not do to you, right? There's no positive aspect to it. Um, a lot of people today will claim, well, you know, I have a right to... Uh, a job or a right to a home or a right to an education. And those positive rights are, are claims that people are making against society uh, that's diametrically opposed to the founders' conception of rights, which would be you have a right to be left alone and to exist and to pursue your happiness without government intervention. You know, let me throw this in, Tim. You don't mind if I call you Tim, do you? I'm pretty informal. No, please. No, please. But please, please do. Yeah. All right. Let me throw this. Snowball. People seem to like my last name as well. So, you know, I, I got to be honest with you. I got to be honest with you, Tim. When I saw the name Snowball, honestly, first off, I thought that maybe there was a typo. But that is really your name. What is the derivative of that name? I mean, what ancestry does that name come from? But you know, it's funny. So we had a kind of a family myth um, that my grandparents and other relatives used to tell about. Well. We think that, that it was a name that kind of rhymed with Snowball, um, and then when, when the family came over, at, at what point ever from, and wound up 
on you know Ellis Island or something. Maybe there was a typo or something, or you know got picked up as a nickname and legally it got picked up, and that's where it came from. But when I grew up and became an adult and started going online and different social networking sites and the internet and everything. I went up doing some research, and I found snowballs in, like, London and then like, Melbourne, Australia. So wow. <laughs> I think that the origin probably actually goes back to, to Europe at some point. Well, I can tell you've got a great sense of humor, and I really admire you, the way you covered that. Let's go back to the rights here for a moment. I, I am absolutely livid that we have divided, if you will, our country into groups that have and want to have special rights whether it's gay rights or women rights or minority rights or health care rights. And I go back and I say, no, you do not have a right to health care. You have a right to go out and work and provide for yourself and your family to get that health care. But nowhere do I read anywhere close in the Constitution or the Bill of Rights or anything that there is a right to have that provided for them. Am I wrong? No, I, and I, I would I would tend to agree with you on that, and I, I think the interesting kind of um, relationship that you can observe, and whether it be healthcare or whether it be especially, I was talking to someone about this the other day with um, public education, right? So in the 1960s, there was legislation put into place uh, to increase uh, student loans, the amounts that you could borrow under student loans and different grants for, for universities. And you can look at the data, and you can look the way it's been plotted on different charts, and there's a relationship, direct relationship between how much money the government is pumping into uh, public education and universities and how much price the price of that commodity has risen. And that makes absolute sense in a market economy, right? In a market economy, when the government is not pumping money, free money, into a system, you would imagine the price would be directly correlated with demand. Mm -hmm. But when you give you know, a, a, an unlimited amount of money pumped into that system, of course, the, the administrators have no incentive to keep prices low. Of course, they're going to keep raising prices. And I think you see the same uh, argument and the same effect with health care. And then the interesting thing is government intervention has caused a price distortion, but then because there's a price distortion, uh, politicians will turn around and argue for more government intervention. Kind of a vicious cycle. Well, if we're going to stay with the Constitution, and by the way, it's the greatest Constitution ever written for any country ever in the history of the world, and uh, abide by what it says and live as what America has been founded and formed by over the last 200 plus years, why are we allowing all these different groups to go in and take a hammer and chisel and chisel away at what was stated and come up with their own rights for this, that, or the other. Sure, I think it's an, it's an unfortunate thing, and you can't really uh, pin it on any particular um, court decision. Of course, as a lawyer, I'm kind of biased toward looking to different Supreme Court decisions and the detrimental effect or the negative impact that they have had um, upon the United States, but I think that it's something that has been developing over time, and if you really can trace it, at least as far as the judicial branch goes to a judge's or a justice's philosophy of, of what their job actually is and how they're supposed to be doing it, right? And, and, and of course, the law is our, is word, it's language, it's the English language, right? And I think from a more originalist perspective, uh, a judge would look at the law on the page, trying to interpret what it meant at the time it was written mm -hmm. by, by, by Democratic majorities, mm -hmm. but always with a eye upon protecting individual rights. And I think... Um, most of our country's problems can be traced to the New Deal era, uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, and it just really, I mean, up until that point, we had a constitutional republic. And I think that you see just a, such a dramatic shift with FDR um, and the other progressives, and especially on the Supreme Court. And I'll give you one example if we have time. So there's, uh, in Article One of the Constitution, which deals with Congress, you have something called the Commerce Clause. Mm -hmm. The Commerce Clause says that Congress has the exclusive power to regulate commerce between the states and, at that time, the uh, Indian tribes. And the whole point was, you know, if we're going to have one cohesive country, we don't want individual states passing taxes or tariffs against right. the goods of their neighboring states. We want to have an open, open market economy between all of the states. That was the original purpose of the Commerce Clause, and you can see that and all over the place in individual, uh, individual writings. But you have the court come in in 1942 in a case called Wickard v. Filburn and say, well, we know that's what the words mean, we know that's what the history says, but we're going to interpret this to mean that Congress
Congress can regulate uh, any commerce that has a substantial, any, any substantial impact upon, upon commerce. And you've seen from that case, Congress's powers just become unlimited because anything that has any even tangential effect upon commerce has now come within the purview of Congress's powers. And I'll tell you that that, that is not a limited government. That's not the way things are supposed to be set up. Um, and that's one of many examples, I think, of, of how the Constitution has become distorted. Yeah, Tim, let me throw this at you, and I'm not even sure how to phrase this. When we had the writers and the creators of our Constitution, it was set in stone, basically concrete, for this country to live by and grow by. But at the same time, today more so than I think ever before in our history, we're seeing an assault on that Constitution by a changing of the guard, if you will, of different Supreme Court justices, different philosophies, millennials that say old men and old times should not dictate what goes on today. I'm really concerned that we're going to be seeing a continual assault for change of our Constitution. What are your thoughts? Well, I'll tell you, you know, the, the founders set up a system... Um, based upon all of their knowledge, all of the political science available to them um, from Western civilization up until that point. And so when you really, if you're a student of history or anyone who's listening is a student of history, when you go back and you, you trace back the uh, origins of Western civilization, whether it be the Greeks to the Romans through Christendom, through Europe, right? The United States is the culmination of all of that philosophy, everything that the founders knew based upon a fixed and unchanging uh, human nature. And so the Constitution was not meant to be a malleable document that would have to uh, change with the times. It's not a living document. Rather, it's a fixed and unchanging framework for a changing society, right? Right. And so, you know, you look at certain things um, like the, the, the debate now over the Second, the Second Amendment. I mean, I, I'm, as, a, as a lawyer and especially um, as someone who grew up with, with, with guns, I mean, the rhetoric... Uh, coming from the left right now is a little disturbing, but there was a piece written by uh, former Supreme Court Justice John Paul Stevens, uh, I think it was about a week ago, where he had said, well, you know, if we're going to uh, put gun control in, that must pass a constitutional amendment, and let's just repeal the Second Amendment, or let's change the, the Second Amendment. And I'll tell you, as much as I disagree with Stevens on that particular issue, that approach actually was the approach that the founders put into the Constitution as a means of changing it, and, and, the, and, the, and the amendment process is extremely difficult. There's only been something like 17 amendments, I think, added to the Bill of Rights since the founding of the Republic. But the idea being, if you are going to change the Constitution, then you, sh you should do it through a constitutional amendment, and that should be the proper process, not going uh, from judges interpreting laws and twisting it to suit their own politics. If you have a constitutional amendment, though, and you let the door be open for change, how do you stop the door from being taken off the hinges and a complete revamp and utter chaos? How do you stop that? Well, like, like I had mentioned, I think that you know, if if you were going to have a process of change, I think that you would be it would be much less dangerous to do it through constitutional amendment. Not only because it's so difficult to pass that, but with the amount of state that you have to have and the amount of uh, congressional members you have to have signed on to something like that. I think that the only time a constitutional amendment really gets passed is when it has a broad, broad consensus, uh, you know, agreement of the country. I think it's much more dangerous with what we have now, not only with judges interpreting the Constitution to fit their own preferences, but with the administrative uh, bureaucratic state. I mean, going back to FDR, we have a fourth branch of government in this country uh, in the form of administrative power that wields much more influence and much more power than anything that the founders ever could have imagined. I mean, when you go back and you read the Federalist Papers and you read James Madison, you see that one of the functions of elections was to keep congressional members and other government actors in check, right? Mm -hmm. The fact that they could do what they wanted while they were in office, but they'd have to answer to their constituents, and if their constituents didn't like what they did, they could be voted out of office. But we have an entire... Uh, a cast of unelected bureaucrats passing rules that have the force of law. And it is really it's something that the Pacific Legal Foundation uh, is dedicated to, to, to fighting and uh, something that I think that any freedom-loving American, if they're not aware of it, um, 
they very well should be. You know, let me ask you this, Tim, and maybe this is out of the wheelhouse for this morning, but I'd like you to comment on it. When we look at the chaos and we look at the utter disregard of California and Governor Jerry Brown towards the federal laws of what is going to happen and what should happen, and a total disobeyance, if you will, of federal law to the protection of illegal aliens in our society... How do we correct this? I mean, absolutely, I think Governor Jerry Brown should be thrown out of office at 3 o'clock this afternoon. <laughs> yeah, well, it's an, it's an interesting question. So I think, again, um, with stuff like this, you can go back to the Constitution. You can look at what was intended by the founders, right? And so our, our government was set up, especially with Congress. You know, I mean, the president, um, under the original system, was never meant to kind of be a, an emperor, you know what I mean? I think that the modern presidents wield entirely too much power. The original founder's intent was to have Congress be the main kind of branch of government, um, but that's kind of going off. But in that system, Congress was set up with certain specific and enumerated powers, and one of those enumerated powers was over the naturalization and immigration of new citizens, right? So far be it for me to, to make an argument that Congress doesn't, doesn't have this power. I mean, it's right there on the page in Article One that Congress wield exclusive federal power over this question. Now, on the flip side of that, you do have uh, the Tenth Amendment, right? So if it was a power that Congress didn't specifically have, then in terms of states' rights, then California or any other state would be fully within their powers to resist this federal encroachment uh, upon their liberty and the liberty of their people. But this is simply not one of those cases. It's very specifically spelled out on the page that Congress wields exclusive power in this area. So, yeah, I'll be curious to, uh, to follow along and see what it was. I think that um, I think the Attorney General was out here in Sacramento the last couple of weeks and uh, filing a lawsuit actually against California and trying to get them, force them to uh, follow federal law. Yeah, but let me, let me throw this in, and I'm not a lawyer, but I slept at a Holiday Inn Express one night. But uh, let me throw this at you. <laughs> All the premises that you're talking about with the Constitution and following the law, etc., are based upon the principles of working with and for the citizens of this country. What's going on in California is a protectionary device that is for illegal aliens that are not citizens, and that's where I think there has to be more of a defining. Absolutely, and I absolutely would agree with you, and it's it's an interesting thing, um, having grown up in California, I spent three years in D.C. Uh, going to law school when I was in law school, but and then I had come back and returned back here to my home state, as, as I had always intended. But when I was in college, I remember um, taking a Californian politics and government class uh, when I was at the university, and it had gone back and talked about the political history of California and how California, for the longest time, had had a whole line of, of Republican governors and Republican um, legislatures and how the state had always been described as kind of purplish. And I think it's really been in the last, you know, 20 or 25 years that you've seen just a hard, a hard shift to, to the left. And, you know, for, for better or worse, I mean, that's, just, that's the interesting thing when you have a state like California that with, that's so democratic, um, especially with the, our initiative system and whatnot. <laughs> you know, the founders, the founders feared a, a democracy and a direct democracy. And the whole idea behind the United States was we're going to set up a republic right. where the citizens can can participate and have a say in who's going to represent them. But then, when when you know their members are sent to uh, to Congress and to the Capitol, then they're in, they're in charge and they're going to do what's in the best interest of, of the state and their their citizens. So, you know, California, we'll, we'll see. You know what happens. I, I hope for the best, but ultimately, if there's some disaster or things aren't going well, it will only be what the people have kind of brought upon themselves. Well, and, uh, l- let me... There'll be some kind of shift. Let me jump in and ask you one final thought here on that, uh, and this is speci- uh, speculation on your part, but uh, go ahead and tell me, when you talk about towns like uh, Clovis, California, Fresno, Bakersfield, Red Bluff, all the citizens that live there may be of a rural background or a conservative background against what's going on in Sacramento, San Francisco, and L.A., and cities like Escondido and Los Alamitos and many others are saying, no, they will not abide by the sanctuary city policy. How do you solve this turmoil? It's going to get worse, isn't it? 
Well, I think it's a tough thing. You know what I mean? If, if, if you want to have political power, if you want to make a political argument that's going to uh, have some kind of sway and get something done, it, there's nothing but taking to the streets or taking to social media or, or advocating. What I always say, you know, I mean, like being an attorney and especially working in an organization like the Pacific Legal Foundation, I mean, we work day in, day out to, to vindicate the rights um, under the Constitution, the limited form of government. But even if you aren't an attorney, one of your listeners, or anyone else, there are things you can do um, in your own day-to-day life. And it really comes to having a knowledge of these right. things, paying attention to what's going on, and being as active as you can be, giving your other life constraints. You know what I mean? And yes. You think back to the American Revolution and, and you know, the Patriots at Lexington and Concord, the first battle of the American Revolution. These were people who, you know, went to their barns or went to their closets and pulled out their muskets and went out and uh, met the British Redcoats, you know, on the town common and, and put everything on the line um, in defense of their own rights. And, of course, I'm certainly not advocating for taking up arms against anybody, but at the same time, I think it takes the courage to uh, champion your own rights Mm-hmm. And, and, and do what you can in your own life to kind of help out in the fight. Uh, Tim, we've got time for just one quick call. I've got exactly a minute left. Call her real fast. Go ahead, please. Well, when we look at California, you look at where we'll be headed if we don't uh, wise up and elect responsible politicians, if there is such a term thing. But, you see, it's, it's, California is so lost. I don't know that there's enough people there that know better to save it. And you see, it's it's a disaster, and it's getting worse. And, and, and what's it going to take for people to wake up and elect somebody else? I'll hang up. All right. Res- uh, would you respond to the caller quickly, Tim? Thank you. Sure, sure, sure. And like I said, you know, we, we can only we can only watch and see and, and do what we can in our own lives and, 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 and you know, encourage our neighbors, whether that be through the church or our neighborhood or our own family, to do what's right politically and to, I think it comes down to educating the next generation of Americans. Mm-hmm. And uh, really, if you want to take back the reins of power in government, um, there's no alternative but to step up and kind of... Um, put in the work and, and, and join the fight. All right. Now, you have obligated yourself to come back in the future because you have got my stamp of approval for a great job. <laughs> and uh, tell us a little bit more about Pacific Legal Foundation, how they can follow this story and many others, please. Absolutely. So we're the oldest and the most active public interest <laughs> law firm in the United States. We're located uh, headquartered in Sacramento, but we have offices all across the country. We're always up at the Supreme Court, and you can go to our website at pacificlegal.org. Uh, my web my web page is on the under the staff tab, Timothy Snowball. That's where you can follow the blog series that I've been writing. I would encourage you to go on there, and uh, whether it be you know share one of our blog posts or look up and read some of our cases. You know, we like I said, uh, every single lawyer or other person in our office is dedicated 100% day in, day out to vindicate the rights of the Constitution. And so we're, we're really, we're not sitting around uh, like you will at a, a university or something like armchair <laughs> professors. We're taking the fight to the government on behalf of the American people. I'll tell you what, you are good. You tell Colin Callahan you can come back anytime you want to. <laughs> Timothy Snowball I with the... I, 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 open invitation, You anytime you want to have me back, you just let me know. I'm happy to come back on. I will do that, sir. God bless you. Have a great week, and thank you for coming on. Thanks, Jeff. My pleasure. A very interesting man, attorney with the Pacific Legal Foundation, Timothy Snowball, about rights and people that try to enforce different rights into our society. Right now, we've got to send it back over to Wheels, and we'll be back in about three minutes. And now, back to Zeb at the Ranch on AM 1230 KBAR. To reach Zeb, call 436-2244 or toll free 1-866-927-4587. And now, here is Zeb Bell. Uh, Welcome back into our last half hour this morning, and I'm honored to have this lady come back on my program. She is the president and founder of The Millennial Solution, best-selling author, and I don't know what this is. Ted X speaker. Good morning, Gabrielle Boucher. How are you? I'm doing well, Ted. Thanks for having me back on. What does the TEDx mean? I don't know. I don't understand that. So TED Talks are kind of the, the famous 18-minute conversations. And so TEDx is a local event. Oh. Where you're able to 
to share a story or kind of share your perspective. So my TEDx talk is actually challenging the notion that millennials will be the next greatest generation. I don't think there's much of a challenge there. I have my doubts they're going to make themselves anything in this country, the way things are going. Uh, Gabby, let me ask you this. Uh, I was shocked because I don't watch any primetime TV anymore because I think it's all filth, sleaze, and absolute mindless drivel. I guess that sums it up. But all of a sudden, the rebirth, if you will, of Roseanne TV show, which seems to bring both the fronts of conservatism and liberalism on the same show and confronting each other this is a good thing what are your thoughts absolutely i think that roseanne's popularity simply shows that there are more americans who support traditional american values than hollywood ever thought and all the pushback that roseanne is getting the entire the entire um cast is getting i think it's just uh shows even how out of touch hollywood really is but i think the real conversation here is it has everything to do with what does it mean to be american what are the actual traditional values that make us who we really are it's not you know the divide and conquer it's not the divisiveness it's just common sense why roseanne is so popular is because she just says things that aren't politically correct but they're still correct she's not worried about offending people She's just telling the truth, and that's what people are so attracted to her, just like they're attracted to that same uh, that same character quality of Donald Trump. People want someone to just tell it like it is. Okay, but now, is this a one-time, uh, one-time shot that's going to be in the dark and heard for a little while, and that's going to be it? Or do you think maybe this might be a trend to kind of tip Hollywood and television on its ear a little bit, that we want to get back to some of the basics that took place with television programming back in the 60s and 70s? I think that it really, it ha- I think it has all the signs of being a potential trend, and we, we're already seeing um, Tim Allen's show, Last Man Standing, conversations about bringing that back on, if you and your listeners remember. He was taken off the air just because they were saying he was too either politically charged or too you know, pro-conservative values, and people didn't really want that. When in reality, you know, ratings matter, and the American people are wanting to participate in, in, in a television community that reflects their own values. And, and in a day and an era where it's extremely competitive, you're no longer looking at just the networks and, and of cable news. You're also, too, looking at everything from Netflix to Hulu to Amazon Prime now has their own um, television shows that they're airing. So it's extremely competitive. So in order for them to continue capturing the market that they have right now, they're going to have to better reflect the values of Americans. Okay, but now, Gabby, what about this fact? And and I don't care if I sound sexist, because this is the way I feel. Television today on prime time on all the networks is absolutely a complete waste because they have denigrated, degraded, and absolutely tried to abolish real men and real man's personalities from the TV shows. If that's not going to be restored, we're never going to see a resurgence of what real life is. I couldn't agree more, and I think it really is. We're living in a day and an hour where we need to have real men stand up. During the Me Too movement, I was extremely outspoken about uh, about the fact that this witch hunt of you know calling men, accusing men before there was any actual investigation taking place was extremely dangerous, not only for women who were who were being hindered because they weren't having being able to have professional relationships with these men but also to these men it's this guilty before proven innocent component and it's completely denigrating to the very foundation of who we are as a country on one end these feminists are saying you know there's no good men out there you know i'm single on a friday night and on the other hand they're pushing any man down who has any sort of chivalry or goes out of his way or is even pretending like he has traditional values so what do you want, right? So I think that as a, as a woman, I really encourage women to to celebrate masculinity and to celebrate men being good men because we need men. We need good men to be to be fathers and bosses and employees and 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 partners and and sons. That's what it really needs to come down to. I couldn't agree with you more. That we need to have a, a, a media uh, and an entertainment industry that celebrates 
quality manhood. Let me ask you, though, has it gone too far down the railroad tracks that we can't turn the train around? In other words, have we let the feminist movement and Hollywood have a complete degradation of men to the point where they're not going to turn this thing around, they're going to keep on with the feminist movement, you don't need men in your life, you can do it all by yourself, and they will not push any men's issues, it's always for the ladies, the girls, etc. Have we gone too far down that track? to turn it around i don't think so i think that there is certainly I'm, I'm a naturally optimistic person but i've also seen in this country plenty of times where we said well there's no way that we can turn back around I mean, if you would have talked to most americans two years ago or you know four years ago whether or not donald trump would be our president most people would say oh you know there's no way right so you really don't know what the future has in store but what i can tell you is, is that, that backlash or that women are starting to experience when it comes to pushing men down in their life is going to come back to roost in a really real way. And we're already starting to see it. We're already starting to see um, families where women have actually gone out and they said, you know, I don't need a man, I'm just going to adopt on my own, which they have, you know, every right to be able to do that. But then they realize, wow, maybe, you know, maybe it does make more sense for me to be able to, be able to have someone to help raise this child with me. There's a reason that a family unit is, is designed the way that it's designed is because it's a lot of it's a lot of darn work trying to raise a kid on your own. And so this idea of, you know, she can do it and you know, she doesn't need a man's help um, is really great when you're just talking about it. But I think as these feminists actually get into, you know, their thirties, their forties or even their fifties and they're looking at starting a family, it becomes extremely clear the power and, frankly, the importance of having men in our lives. Absolutely. If you get a chance today, would you sit down and write a memo to Hillary Clinton and please tell her very respectfully that she lost the election and she should just fade away? Would you do that for me? I would love to. Maybe I'll take a, a note out of Donald Trump's book and send her a tweet, but I'm not quite <laughs> sure if she'd respond. Why does this woman continually, almost week by week, find a new approach to make an excuse that she lost the election? I just don't understand, Hillary. You know, that's you and me both, my friend. Uh, Hillary Clinton's latest tour when she went through India and was, was saying that the only reason that she didn't get elected was because white married women didn't vote for her, um, which, as a white married woman, I take full responsibility um, absolutely, I didn't vote for you. And, and that's another example, I think, Zeb, of, of why the feminist movement um, doesn't need to be as extreme as it is, is because if, if true feminism had taken over, Hillary Clinton would be elected because we've got about 51% of our population, which are women, of, of the electorate are women, and if they were just voting for her because she's a woman, she would be in office, but that didn't happen because women like myself know Hillary Clinton. It wasn't because my husband or my boss or another man in my life was telling me to vote for Donald Trump. I didn't vote for her because she didn't have the mindset. She didn't have the worldview, and she didn't have, frankly, the economic or the security policies that I knew were going to be right for my family and for my future. It had nothing to do with the fact that we happened to both be women and had everything to do with, with the fact that I was voting what's best for me and my family and my country. Absolutely. Gabby, I want to ask you something. This may be out of the wheelhouse this morning, but I want to ask you this anyway. David Hogg, a 17-year-old student down in Florida that really has come into prominence thanks to the pushing by the liberal left, the big money of the Soros and MoveOn.org, etc., and trying to come out and have a condemnation against uh, Laura Ingram and the cancellation of her program. I am ne I've never been more more disgusted at some of the youth in America as I am today by seeing this young man try to step up to the podium and take over and tell us, the taxpayers, what we need to do and who we should not listen to. I couldn't agree more. And honestly, my heart breaks for the youth of America. Being a millennial myself, I, I know the challenge and the frustration of being someone who's young and wanting your voice to be heard. But I think... David Hogg is a perfect example of how youth breeds ignorance. And what he's saying is not only culturally and constitutionally incorrect in many instances, it's just downright disrespectful. And so this young man and those in his movement, 
if they want to be effective, I would give my own generation this advice. If you want to be heard, you must first listen. Rather than shouting at people, you need to be talking with people. If you want the older generation to take you seriously, you need to take yourself seriously and stop acting like children and throwing a temper tantrum. You need to be mature, put together actual policy results, not just saying let's take all guns away. Let's be mature about this. If you want us to treat you like an adult, you better start acting like one. You know, Gabby, I I just really enjoy having you on the program because you tell it like it is. But when you talk about the millennial generation, I want to be very fair here. I know a lot of people that are in that generation that are prime uh, examples of how they can succeed in America. They can succeed if they try, and they have. I know a lot of business owners of uh, younger age that are really doing all with the talents God gave them. But why do the millennials in general, when you hear about it on television or read in the newspaper, why are they hell-bent of sitting there on a curbside yelling and and, uh, screaming for fairness when all they do is hold out a tin cup for uh, a mere pittance of offering so they can continue doing nothing? I I couldn't agree with you more. As someone who studied my generation for over 11 years, I'm fascinated by what motivates my generation. And the number one motivator for my generation is mission. Now, what's scary is that the left has used that mission motivation for their own selfish extremes, where they're literally mobilizing. The George Soros of, of, of the world are mobilizing and weaponizing my generation's passion and using it for their own political ends. But those on the right, the conservatives, the Republicans, have yet to tap into that mission orientation. How are they motivating my generation to get excited about, you know, whether that's lower taxes or more opportunity or the opportunity to... I don't start, I have a food truck on the side of the road. You know, whatever it is that you want to do, that's, that's available with a more free market type opportunity. And I think, frankly, that's a failure on our part in the conservative movement for not effectively communicating that. And that's why every time I get to talk to leaders like you, that I know you're talking about on, on your show every day, that we have to communicate in a way that makes sense to average people. We can't be putting ourselves out to pasture and using words and phrases only only those within the echo chamber get. We've got to get more people on our side because more people agree with us if we can just start having conversations with them. Absolutely. Gabrielle Boucher, known as Gabby on our program, and she is the president and founder of The Millennial Solution, and I really respect your opinions. Thank you. Please come back in the future and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thanks, Zeb. Always an honor. All right. Thank you very much. Nice lady and very well informed as to what's going on. Gabrielle Boche, thank you very much. Well, we had better take care of the weather forecast. And uh, it's not that bad. It's springtime, and I know we're going to have a lot of uh, changes in the temperature and changes in moisture and everything. We're going to get right to that with Scarrow's Meats. Don Scarrow and the crew at 331 North Road, Jerome. Number to call, 324-7657. Or you can go to their website, scarrowsmeats.com. Oh, my. Delicious smoked hams, marrow marinated prime ribs. <laughs> oh, delicious. And of course, breakfast sausages and bacons and bratwurst. I love bratwurst. All of this and so much more at Scarrow's Meats in Jerome. Absolutely phenomenal. We'll tell you more right after the weather. Mostly cloudy skies as we hit to the middle of the week. Here's your weather forecast for Zeb at the Ranch. Mostly cloudy skies is what we're expecting for today. Winds out of the west-southwest, right around 10 miles an hour. Gusts possible as high as 26 miles an hour. We are expecting a high of 57 tonight. Mostly cloudy skies with a low of 39 tomorrow. We are going to have some rain showers in the forecast, maybe even thunderstorms by the afternoon. Mostly cloudy skies with a high of 58. 60% chance of rain showers for Thursday night. Cloudy skies with a low right near 44. For Friday, 20% chance of showers in the afternoon. Partly sunny skies with a high of 
60. Friday night, we are expecting mostly cloudy skies with a low of 46. More rain showers expected for Saturday and a high of 58. That's your weather forecast for Zeb at the Rain. And Gina always does a great job on the weather forecast, and it's brought to you this hour by Scarrow's Meats, 331 North Road, Jerome. The number to call, 324-7657. Oh, my. They are changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time. Scarrow's Meats. I've got time, and I would really, really appreciate some calls. Give me a jingle on the landline, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. I I think I mentioned this earlier this morning in the first hour. If I didn't, I'm going to say it again. Uh, I get a chance in my work to work with and meet and get a chance to visit with some of the most interesting people in the world. And I have been really pleasantly surprised as to getting ready for the primaries on May 15th to get a chance to know and meet a lot of the people that are running for political office. And i got to tell you something, folks. We owe them the courtesy and the decency to find out more about them, their personalities, and, of course, what they stand for, for that respective political office. And we've got some really wonderful people living right here in this area. And that was brought to my attention again yesterday. I met some more folks that were just absolutely great and very sincere and wanting to run for political office because they know that the only thing that, way to get things done is to jump in, roll your sleeves up and be a part of the process and i just want to say to all of these folks uh god bless them they're taking the time and they're getting involved and we the least we can do is find out more about them and if you find a candidate that you really like and their background and what they stand for vote for them and go to the polls and vote in the primaries and then again in November. There is no excuse, none, for not going out and voting for your favorite candidate or finding out who your favorite candidate is because of their values and what they believe in. So take the time and become knowledgeable. Calls are welcome, 436-224-1-866-927-4587. I'd like to hear from you, so give me a call on the landline right now. And we still have time for a couple of calls. Please, it's your program, give us a call. Right now, I also want to remind you about our major sponsor. While I'm doing this, I know you're going to call. And don't forget to roll into spring with a big spring tire sale going on at your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire. Tire centers, all seven locations serving you with the best of tires. All at, caller, I'll be right there. You scared me. I'll be right with you. Stand by. Don't forget they've got all the tires for your cars, pickups, SUVs, horse trailers, boat trailers. All the best in tires. All the different tread designs for your style of driving. Stop in today and also check out the best of brake service, front end alignment, shocks and struts, batteries at Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family in Paul, Daniel on Poline in Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland in Burley. Yep, the best. Your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers. Caller, good morning to you. Thank you. You know, Zeb, uh, you know, this caravan that's coming in from southern, you know, Central America, and they're in New Mexico, and uh, I guess the Mexican government, through pressure from Trump, has decided to do something. But if you were to listen to any Jorge Ramos, uh, other people that have been on that are pro-immigration, Hispanic, pro-open borders, and when you logically talk to them whether or not it's Tucker Carlson or whoever it's been Chaffetz has been on for Ingram, I thought he did very well, but there is absolutely no logic to any of their answers or their, or their you know their supposed you know statements or you know whatever, but uh, the thing of it is, is you know when you can't talk in reality to people about what is really happening. See, and, and everybody just 
bounce off their, you know, their side of the story. We never get anything done. Yeah, but wait a minute, Randy. Uh, Randy, listen to this. I- I'll go back to what I said the first hour. And Wheels, we got a little feedback here, please. Um, I'll go back and say there's a right and a wrong on every issue. And in this case, it's breaking the law and accepting lawbreakers to come into our country and take up residents illegally or stop them at the border, turn them away, and say, if you want to come in, make the applications in a legal fashion, and then you can come to America. It's plain and simple. We have laws. We have a constitution. We have a Congress that has voted in those laws. And anything else is absolutely illegal. Right. And and you see, when you have states like California who have no intentions of following the rules, and they put their own citizens in jeopardy, but thank God Orange County and other counties are deciding to fight back. But you see, you see if we kill the golden goose, Free market capitalism is what runs America. Absolutely. That's why we have an economy that's roaring. Absolutely. You know, I, I don't know a, a Mexican anywhere, whether or not he works for somebody or whether or not he's illegal. Money is all they care about for the most part. They care about other things, sure. But you see, the thing of it is, is this. If you ruin the golden goose, there will not be anything left. Amen. See, when do we decide that we're going to save what feeds us? I couldn't they agree. I could not agree more, Randy. I wish I had more time because I'd really like to oh, elaborate on this, but I'm out of time on the program. Call me tomorrow, first hour. We'll talk more about this. You got, thanks, God. God bless you, man. Thank you. And thanks to all of you for tuning in. Zebeth Ranch right here on KBAR 1230 AM and then streaming live all over the world on ZebBell.com. i got to run. And it's been a great day. Thank you for all your calls. Great guests tomorrow, too. Don't miss it. Zebeth Ranch, where we always say the way things were are the way things ought to be. You have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow morning at 8.06.